Here's your host, Wilmot Machi Perkins. Morning, everybody. Morning, and welcome once again to Perkins Online. Uh, you know, I'm always being criticized on this program. Up to yesterday, we had a caller who said it. Criticized on the ground that I, I seem to find all the bad things to say. And, um, and don't seem, seem to be aware of, of the good things that could be said. And, um, I've been searching around for some good things to say, some things to congratulate the government on. And one that I have latched upon uh, comes out of Jampro. Jampro, after, what is it, some, it's just under 20 years, is changing its name. It is hereafter going to be um, Jamaica Trade and Invest. Jampro is now going to be Jamaica Trade and Invest. I take it that somebody has calculated Apparently the cabinet approved this yesterday and somebody has calculated that the name Jamaica Trade and Invest is going to lead to more trade and more investment in Jamaica. So we are to look forward to seeing a spurt in the economy resulting from an increase in trade and an increase in investment um, which will itself be the result of the change from Jampro to Jamaica Trade and invest. <laughs> I, I am sure that that brilliant idea, absolutely brilliant idea, is worthy of the fifth term. term. Oh, I'm, I, I, I should have mentioned that the structure remains the same and the philosophy we are told remains the same but there's going to be this name change and um, I, I can only I conclude you know some mischievous and um, pison mouthed people would assume that this is a piece of damn nonsense and a waste of time. I mean, whatever it can do as Jamaica trade and invest, it can do as Jampro. But I choose not to go that route. Right? I am positive and I'm not going to be taken down that route. Right? It isn't a piece of damn foolishness. It isn't a waste of time and, you know, a headline that isn't really saying very much um, I am prepared to assume to be positive and to assume that there is going to be a surge in trade and a surge in investment resulting from the change of name from Jampo, Jampro to Jamaica Trade and Invest <laughs> uh, I am sure that that is worthy of the fifth term. 
So opposition, watch yourself. Watch yourself. Sister P is going to sweep back to victory on the basis of achievements like these. And don't let me hear anybody saying again that Sister P after what is it now going 10 months in office is it? Um, 8 months whatever. Um, no it must be more than 8. She became Prime Minister in March so it's about um, we're going up to we're pushing towards 11 months after after that time in office as Prime Minister that she has achieved nothing right she has at least achieved the name change from Jampro to Jamaica Trade and Invest congratulations Sister P and I hope that Mr um, what's his name that the Greener's cartoonist I hope that he will take note. Um, there is more good news. It is interesting how you know when you when you set out to find the good when you to look for the good news. You f how easily you find it. And um, I mean, it is a, a a lesson to me that you know. Um, the, we're hearing from um, Mrs. Potopsk Singh of Jampro that oil will flow within a decade. Oil will flow within a decade. Potop Singh. Um, and the observer's business writer, uh, Linda Hutchinson, uh, Jatar, Linda Hutchinson, Jatar, uh, writing, writing from Port of Spain in Trinidad, where they apparently they had some conference. Um, writes that Jamaica anxious to find some uh, some commercial quantities of hydrocarbon to deal with its high energy consumption levels. You notice that? Our high energy consumption levels. What are we consuming this energy doing? Manufacturing and so on? Or just consuming it in um, some high class motor cars which clutter up our roads and leave us sitting down in them air conditioning on um, burning fuel and getting nowhere. <laughs> um, well, she, she says that it, to, you know, anxious to find some hard, hard hydrocarbon, is now seeing new hope in uh, reprocessed scheme. No, I'm not seeing this thing, man. Scheme data, according to Mrs. Potopsky, top level industry official. Anyway, what is happening here? Uh, we have been looking for oil. The, the um, Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica, I think it is, has been, or well, some, the agency to which Mrs. Potopsky belongs, has been looking for oil in Jamaica for 50 years. Um, we haven't yet found it in commercial quantities, but Mrs. Patop Singh is giving us the reassurance that we're going to be finding it in another 10 years. So after, after at the end of 60 years of searching for oil, um, oil 
will flow. Um, remember, of course, that we have been we have been looking for gold too. Um, and uh, at one point, we were told that um, that um, you know we had found gold, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know what has happened there. <laughs> I don't know what has happened there. Um, of course, it, there was a little connection between that and the, that incident at Crawl. You remember? Um, but the gold mine has been, av- has been abandoned. Um, so I don't know what. Maybe we'll refine gold. Might even find some diamonds. And then no, there was the the treasure that we were looking for in the vicinity of the Pedro Keys. Um, we ships, Spanish galleons laden with treasure. That must have been more than well, it's well over five years ago that this was going on maybe six, seven I don't know we have not heard a word about it since have we what is the position what is happening the minister of education was assigned responsibility for this Um, has any have any treasures been found And if so, what has happened to them? Fascinating. Absolutely so. Anyway, good and cheerful things I've been talking about, haven't I? (laughs) We take a break. We come back in a moment. Hey, thank you very much. We're back here online. Um, The Minister of uh, transport Mr. Bobby Pickerskill has been out in Port Moore uh, I suppose that time of the month for him um, he has been talking about um, you know the problem with the toll road and uh, I he heard him saying on a newscast that um, he had had he nor his his government had had uh, nor I suppose the toll operators had been so optimistic about the toll road as to think that the traffic would have built up on it, would have virtually doubled in a shorter time as it has. And this, I suppose, is the explanation that Mr. Pickersgill is offering for the fact that what was represented as a toll road um, has turned out to be an expensive parking lot. <laughs> Now, what I would like to know is why why did the minister think that with all these cars in Portmore and all of these people looking for easy access to Kingston where they work and do whatever else, take their children to school and so on, why would he not exp- have expected them to to use the, the toll road? And why in any event would they not have planned it in a way that the capacity of the toll road could have been delivered onto the pre-existing roads? Um, I mean, how can you plan a road, a toll road, that will take let us say X number of cars per hour a 
and you're going to be depositing those cars on pre-existing roads and those pre-existing roads are not going to be able to carry that that traffic then what was the point of putting the toll road there you had a pre uh, a pre-existing causeway it tended to be to be cluttered up you know that um, there's more traffic than it could comfortably carry um, so you replace that toll road that causeway with a toll road and um, and the toll road has the same problem except that people are now having to pay a toll on that road and are paying a toll it is costing them when they were using the causeway they were held up alright and they didn't like it they would have preferred not to have been held up but at least they weren't paying to be held up <laughs> now they're they have the causeway they are pay, paying to be held up and the prospect seems to be the toll operators having applied for an increase in the toll and one understands that they have a right to do this every six months um, there's an application now on Mr. Pickersgill's desk for an increase in the toll so they might shortly have to be paying more to be held up I don't really understand what has happened here. I really don't. Uh, and are we taking any bets as to whether Mr. Pickersgill is going to allow an increase in the toll? Of course, there's there's one problem. I don't think I'm going to find it so comfortable to run with it. <laughs> run with that one. I mean, if it, has a, if it was an, wasn't an election year, then I'm going to run with it. But this year one, you know, I'm going to hold back on that. And when the election is over and we are back in power, then we can correct it. We're going to correct it. And so you people in Portmore might then have to pay a rather larger toll. Anyway, um, funny is it that of course is another of the good things that has happened. You know, the toll road, the the toll parking lot, <laughs> and um, and the increase that is proposed. All these are good things for the countryman, of course. What's worrying about? Anyway, let's go to our callers. Uh, hello? Yes, Mr. Perkins. Good yes, morning. Sir, good morning to you. Um, in regard to the conversation you had yesterday with a man who was advocating the unrestrained freedom to bleach the skin. Yes. You know, at first, you know, I found the conversation somewhat amusing uh -huh. but after a more sobering thought of the whole conversation it suddenly struck me it's what? it suddenly struck me that this blind desire to lighten the skin is an extremely sad reflection of black people here in Jamaica uh -huh. I mean it's not only in Jamaica it happens it happens in the United States it is true States. from what I understand so, you know, it is happening um, even in Africa and in some Asian countries. Uh -huh. But I'm almost certain, I can almost bet, that it was started by Jamaican black women. Uh, is that so? I don't I, know about that. But, <laughs> but look here. Yeah. Is it just a desire to lighten the skin? Or, or is it that, that we have grown up to believe that people are better mm -hmm. the lighter their complexion? 
It has to do with Mr. Perkins. Isn't that a belief that is, is planted in our minds? Yes, it has to do with uh, that. Mr. Siaga the other day was talking about the sins of slavery. Yes. Right? Um, and I, you know, I'm prepared to accept that mm. such things were implanted in the mind uh, during the period of slavery. Yes. The question that I would like to ask, right? Yes. Bearing in mind that history is not something that that happened once uh-huh. right and um, that you know the, the things that occurred yes. um, 500 a thousand years ago are indelibly stamped uh-huh. and um, and that is the end of that history is something that is made yes. every yes. day of life and don't you think right? history itself have has some kind of purpose for the present? That what? Don't you think history? Yes, but but hold on. Yes. If something happened to that influenced behavior uh-huh. in a pernicious way mm-hmm. 500 years ago, the question we must ask ourselves mm-hmm. is why is it that that thing continues to influence behavior 500 years later? Yes. Right? But well, we yes. have had the power yes. to change all of Mr. that. Mr. Perkins, when you said 500 years ago... Well, whatever. Yes, you make it seem as if an incident uh-huh. happened no, 500 no, 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 no. years ago. I you have saying, to take into consideration... No, hold on. The, the whole, the whole all right, don't slavery. argue a point when I'm saying that... What's the point of arguing it when yes. I'm saying that that is not what I'm saying? Okay. Right? What I'm saying is... That over the period of slavery, whenever, w- w- you know, a slav- of all men. slavery en- ended in 1838. Yes. Right? That's a long time ago. Uh-huh. And we have certainly had our, our independence since 1962. Mm-hmm. Right? That's, what is it, 40. 44 years ago, am I right? Yeah, but we're going on 45, I think. Uh-huh. Now, in that time, and indeed, we, we, had, um, we had our own political leadership. Yes. From as far back as 1944. Yes. Right? And we're taking an active role in the shaping of our country's affairs, and so far as the politics is concerned. Yes. And so on. Now, why is it that in that time we have stuck with all these um, consequences of slavery Mm -hmm. right and we have not taken the necessary steps to eradicate them from our society well I'll tell you one reason for that Uh now firstly we weren't prepared to be a nation in the first place as a people. We were not prepared to what? We weren't prepared to take up this whole business of self-governance you know, in an independent nation. You know. Oh, is that so? We Why? We weren't prepared for that. Why? It, it, you forget that it was only recently we were colonial subjects. <laughs> and a little further up, we were... Hold on, sir. Now I'm saying, Mr. Perth, could I, could I point time. out something to you? Yes. The Caymanians yes. are still colonial subjects. Yes. The Bermudans are still colonial subjects. Right? Is there any evidence that you are aware of that the Caymanians and the Bermudans are afflicted with the residues of slavery in the way that we are? Maybe no, not in the sense that uh-huh. they are not independent. No, they are they are still colonial right. subjects as you define but it. But um, I'm almost certain that they are in a better position now uh-huh. to take their um, nation into their own hands. But there is seem to be no, uh, you have no anxiety to do so, right? They are quite happy. Um, being colonial subjects. You know, it was, I think it was a cruel hoax, you know, Her Majesty played on black people here in Jamaica. You know. Is that so? <laughs> because we had, beca- we had became a liability 
rather than an asset. Yes. And um, I, I think she's just only shunning her responsibility as far as black people in general. I mean, shunning her. What is her responsibility as far as black people are concerned? She takes care of her subjects. What? Her Majesty takes care of her subjects. She, her Majesty takes care of her subjects? Yes. <laughs> and that is why. In what way? In Barbados. And that is why the people in, um, in, in I mean, um, islands that are dominated. Hold on a moment, yes. moment huh? Hold on. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here on that. Uh, as I was saying, yes, that sir. it is incumbent on Her Majesty the Queen, you know, to take care uh, of look, her Look, so don't talk rubbish. Maybe it seems that way. Don't too, talk right? rubbish. But at least, before Jamaica became independent, <laughs> Jamaica should have been mentally prepared. For example, look at the university. And whose responsibility was it to prepare Jamaica look mentally? Look at the university. Jamaica was given a fraction of a university. In, in fact, each parish should have been given a university and Her Majesty was, um, should have been the, the, the one who established these universities. All right, sir. Thank you very much. All the best to you. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hello? It is clear that we're not fit for independence. Hello? Yes? Yes, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. Yes, my, 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 my thought, my idea, my take of the day is that, um, I heard you a lot talking about constitutional reform, but yes, Mr. Perkins, when are our parliamentarians are going to realize how oh, vital constitutional reform is to the nation, national security and national development? Look here, sir. We, it, back in 19, in the early 1960s, 61, 62, there, there about. We left it to our politicians, our political leaders, some of whom yes. have since been designated national heroes, to devise a constitution for us. They made a mess of it. Yes. Right? Yes. So what are we going to do? Sit down and leave it again once more to the present set of politicians to devise another constitution for us? No. No. We need to take a stand because what I see to take place now with Mr. Perry, and I yes. don't know if you agree with me, we need a republican system, we need a proportional representative in this thing. The whole first past the post system need to be done away with now because this whole matter of garrison and thing is, is it is not it is not beneficial. Yes, sir, to but us. you know let me suggest something to you. That in thinking about the constitution, right? Yes. What we, first of all, need to think about is what is the purpose to def we need to define what is the purpose for which that constitution is going to exist, right? Yes. And what happened, the essential thing that happened in 1961-62 was that a constitution was devised which favored the political leadership more than it favored the people. That right? is quite so. Uh -huh. the, co the, the political leadership obviously did not trust the people and had no high opinion of them. But, and therefore, yes. the, the Constitution, the, the, the Constitution was not the people's Constitution. Quite so. It was not a constitution that sought to recognize and uphold the rights of the people. Thank you very much. And that is right? why... The, that, the present constitution, yes. it hypocritically names rights yes. in the, that chapter, the chapter 3. Yes. Right? Yes. The fundamental rights and freedoms. <laughs> right? Yes. And every right that it, every time it names a right and tells once it, it, it provides all kinds of um, openings yes. whereby those rights can be taken away. 
Yes, yes, right? that is quite so. And I tell you something. If you look at section 50 of the Constitution. Yes. Section 50 of the Constitution provides that a bill that goes through Parliament on the votes of a two-thirds majority, right? Yes. Of the members of each house, which means that it has to be supported by the opposition. Um, yes. So the PNP can't do it to, to the Labour Party, and the Labour Party can't impose it on the PNP. Yes. The, 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 they too have to agree yes, it has to as to what is being done. Yes. And any bill that goes through Parliament on that basis um, is law. Yes. Whether or not it um, violates provisions of the chapter on the fundamental rights and freedoms. Right? Yes, Mr. Perkins. So your right to life can be taken away if the two parties agree to it. <laughs> right? That's all it needs. Yes. So, <laughs> so Mr. Perkins, uh -huh. so what is really going to take place now? Because um, as you talk about the Constitution and the sections of the Constitution, uh -huh. you know, I can tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm just in my teens, so I've never gotten, I've never got a whole of the, a, a, a copy of the Constitution in my in my hands. Yes. But that is, yeah, that is also a factor which is contributing to 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 the um, the lack of development in the country because when you have supporters going behind both parties and if you should go to one of those diet supporters whether I wish ever be and ask them say man can I have a copy of the constitution could you um, email it to my email they cannot give you a copy of it uh -huh. so they don't know what does their responsibility and their rights entails uh -huh. with them and the government whichever party it may be yes let me tell you something, sir. Jamaica, it is said, became independent in 1962. Yes. The independence of Jamaica, of the people of Jamaica, yes. was hijacked yes. by our political leaders. Yes, yes. Right? Quite so. It is they who became independent. Not us. True. Right? And when you look at it again, I, I, I don't know what is the Ministry of Education is doing. You know? it is, this is my opinion. I think the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of National Security should be combined because well, it is only through education that people can, can, can have a sense of identity and, 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 and know what is their responsibility. Yes, but I, I wouldn't argue that, um, that those two ministries should, should, should be combined. Yes. They take different approaches, you know? Yes. But um, but I agree with you that education is fundamentally important. Yes. And in Jamaica, right? Mr. Perkins, our educational system is about a class thing. This education system is a class thing. Uh -huh. Where, as you say, we are not independent. You, know? you see, the private sectors and all those other entities of the government or NGO, they, 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 are, they, don't, they don't give assistance to the non-traditional high schools. And, and this is where... Our youths are end up end up in, in, in the slum and in the dumps and in crime and violence mm -hmm. because when you look at it, you know, this, this, this whole thing of every child must learn and every child has the right to and, <laughs> and I don't see where they are giving youths the opportunity to be to, to gain a, 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 a good education. Yes, um I don't think that we have gone we have talked a lot about education, so yes. But in, in practical terms, yes. we have yes. not really sought to promote yes. um, the education of our children to any really considerable degree. Yes. To begin with, yes. if we were really serious, if we understood the importance of education, yes. recognizing that Jamaica's greatest asset is not any oil that might be found in 10 years' time. Quite so. Right? Quite it so. is the people of Jamaica. The yes. greatest asset of Jamaica is its people. And when you look at what is going on in Jamaica today, the levels of crime, for example, 
what that is telling you is that we have severely damaged our greatest asset. Yes, yes. Right? The human, the human, the human being in Jamaica. And I don't think our leaders know that the greatest asset of the country is the human because they do not invest in human. They're not interested. No, sir, they're not interested right? in that. <laughs> not interested. <laughs> so, Mr. Perkins, now, how do you think we can really get the Constitution? Uh, the constitution well, to the to people of Jamaica, sir. Yes. The people of Jamaica yes. are going to have to get up. Yes. You hear what Bob Marley said? Get up, stand up for our rights. Yes. Yes, quite okay. so. It, it, nobody is going to take, to take rights and parcel them up and, and carry them and deliver them at your door. Right? Yes. Rights are something that you are going to have to be prepared to fight for. But, but, but this okay. first part of the system, Mr. Perkins, it was developed to, to keep the people this way as what I well, I, I don't know it. that the first part of the poor system yes. is, is, um, is what is causing the problem, sir. Yes. Right? Yes. The f- first part of the poor system can work and has, has worked. It does work in a number of countries. Yes. Right? Nothing yes. wrong with it. Um, but the thing is that, that, that the people, the people of Jamaica are not, I mean, in the same way that caller that was on a moment ago. Yes. Thinks that the queen is, <laughs> is really the one at fault. Yes. She should have been prepared to do this and do that and do no, the other for Mr. us. Mr. Bustamante and Mr. Micah and, and Mr. Uh-huh. Norman Manley. The, the people of Jamaica. Yes. Believe that, um, you know, Bustamante and Manley should between them do it for you. Right? Yes. We did not get up and involve ourselves seriously yes. in what was happening. Right? And determine where we wanted to go and what we wanted to do with our independence. And we allowed the politicians to hijack it. True, true. That's why we are stuck in this whole situation now. Absolutely. We don't know where to run to. And, and, the, and the politicians can't help us now. But, but I, I really, I am of the opinion that really and truly though, we really need a constitutional reform. And I think we should call back um, the distinguished fellow of the university, Mr. Edward Siago, because he, he, he's, he's also one of the fathers of the foundation, of, of the constitution. You understand me? Uh-huh. Yes, so he, he, he needs to come back in place. If, if, if the parliamentarians are serious and mean Jamaica good, I think they will change the first part support system. And by doing it, they will get some assistance from Mr. Siago, who I think, I don't know if, 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 if you, you have the evidence, if any other, um, of, of the fathers of the, of the Constitution are alive. But I'm, but I'm sure that Mr. Siago helped to write the Constitution and he's around so we can get some assistance from him and see where um, um, the fathers had gone wrong to correct the situation. Don't, don't you also feel so, Mr. Perkins? Well, um, I don't know, sir, that, uh, that it would, you know, he can, I'm sure he can make some contribution. So can you. Okay? Yes. Okay. All right. All the best to you. We take a break. We come back shortly. Okay. Thank you very much. We're back online. Hello? Brother Mate. Hi. How are you? I haven't heard from you. Greeting. Greeting. And, and peace profound. Positive Pot vibrations. Positive, vibrations, positive, positive solutions. solutions. The trumpet has sounded. My, my countrymen all, all arise from your slumber and answer and the call. The call. Torch has been lighted. The dawn, the dawn is at hand. hand. Who joins in the fight for his own native land? Land of my birth. I pledge to thee, loyal and, and faithful, faithful true to be. You Monte, know that would have made a much better national anthem than the one we have. No, <laughs> brother Motte. Yes. Your menu is very, very rich this morning. My what? Your menu is rich. Very rich history. And the Constitution. Yes. I've listened to that last gentleman uh, uh, talking about the Constitution. Uh-huh. I think um, what matters most is the brought up sea of our people. England can be recognized as one of the most civilized countries almost in the world. Uh-huh. I lived there, and they haven't got a written Constitution. 
and yes. it doesn't bother us to have it neither. Uh, yes, but that is because of a, a different historical background. The yes. constitution of the war, the yes. political arrangements of Britain have evolved over time. Yes. Out of a, uh, an aristocratic system of, you know? Yes. They had an aristocratic society. Yes. Uh, well, a society do, um, dominated by aristocratic yes. class yes. of people. Um, and, um, and they had, of course, the, the monarchy. At the at the top of that, yeah. and that evolved over time into a a system of yeah. government that admitted democracy yes. and was guided by certain aristocratic conventions. Yes. People behaved certain way and did not behave in others. Right. 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 Um, and over time, that those conventions proved reliable. Right. Because, um, um, but it is never society that can sit down and wait to evolve over a couple, a thousand years or more. But, 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 but um, brother Mutti. Well. Um, for um, instance, eh? in England. I beg your pardon? I say, for instance, in England, uh -huh. when a man says, I owe you, he's as good as written, you know. Yes. But because it is because of their deep consciousness, you know. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, um, you touch a very... Mark, I'm not sure. I'm not sure to what extent that th that those conventions yeah. are necessarily being um, uh, uh, continuing as strong as they used to be. Well, when me was a boy, it was. Well, <laughs> but I, I see the British Prime Minister yeah. is now being questioned by the police yeah. about um, about the possibility that um, that contributions to the party's campaign funding yes. were exchanged for uh, um, for for membership of the House of Lords. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And of the nobility appointment, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know whether, I mean, I don't think that has ever before happened in in British history. That's right. Um, um, Brother Muti, you mentioned history. Uh, deeper the roots. Eh? History um, and bleaching. Uh -huh. I heard you, you, you elaborate on that. So, but then you said history. I said deep are the roots. Let us reflect on history. Uh -huh. Say, um, uh, for instance, thousands of years ago, uh, in Egypt, which was one of the most advanced countries then, and along the river Nile live these Nubians, some of the most advanced black people in the world. It was they who built the, the, the Gaza Pyramid. It is still one of the wonders of the world today. And uh, I say deep are the roots where this bleaching came about. Um, when the Caucasians, the white people, when they go to Egypt, they used to go by the River Nile and lie on the bank and sun tan themselves wanting to become dark mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, uh, when we grow up into our, into our society and see under the Caucasian that are enjoying the most luxurious position etc therefore it is deep down in our subconscious mind for our black youth failing to realize that um, education must come first well <laughs> and because and then again Marcus Garvey I'm talking history because you say history. When Marcus Garvey went to the United States in the 20s, as you know, when the, the beginning of the revolution, there were signs in Harlem which reads, when you're white, you're right. When you're brown, you stick around. And when you're black, you stay to the back. And these are the things. But then again, what is happening now? Me and you must go out on the street and tell ourselves that it's not a matter of pigmentation, but it's a matter now of ability. Yes, but i tell you something. History comes about as a result of the things that we do. Things that we are doing today are going to, are going to be history in 10 years' time. Yes, or whatever, right. some number... Tomorrow will, right. be, will be history, right? 
What do you know, Brother Moti? And the question that I want to ask, we have the freedom to act and to shape our own lives and our own future. Yes. Right? So why is it that we are sitting down and relying upon on what was stuffed into our heads hundreds of years ago on the conditions of slavery? Yes. Why are we allowing after 60 odd years of what it is? 40 odd years? Yes, of independence. Of independence. Yes. Right? Yeah. And why are we allowing our history yes. to continue to be shaped by the values of the slave society? Why? Lack of and whose fault is that? Well, is that the fault of the slave owners? No. Or is that the fault of our, ourselves and in particular of, of our leaders? Of, of our leader, Because, okay. you know, Brother Mati, um, I have been reading this subject very much, uh, global warming. The ozone layer is being damaged by the emission of greenhouse gases and carbon monoxide. And some of the, some of the largest industrial countries, they are contributing to it. But here is it now. The black man because of the damage of the ozone layer and, and the ultraviolet ray that is penetrating, bombarding planet Earth. The black man is the only human being that is blessed with a thing known as melanin. No, to, melanin. Uh, melanin. That black skin is a blessing. Well, uh, I'm hold not on. sure. Hold on, hold on. <coughs> In China, you have at least 10 million black Chinese known as the Lalas. Oh, In so? India, they are the most advanced of the Chinese, very highly intelligent. Uh -huh. But they are dark-skinned in Indians too. Yes, they are um, the Madras. The Madras. So, <laughs> don't fool yourself about it. I think we may be the last one to remain on planet Earth. Because this blessed melanin, this black skin, and it's full time that our people become very conscious of this beautiful God-given thing, the melanin and stop damaging him by that stupid bleaching. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, but I would suggest to you that melanin is of far less importance than brain. Yes. Than brain power. Yeah, right? but, but then again, you know, let's face it, you have to tell the people the truth. You have to, that, that, that inferiority complex that is thus created in them, where they look around and then see white prosperity, etc. And now is the time we are, we are the door of, of education. Ah, but here again, sir. <coughs> here again. The question is, why is it that the whites are prosperous and we back in the ditch? Does it have to do with the fact that we have allowed ourselves to be um, to be swayed to our lives to be determined by what was inculcated in us um, 500 years ago? That's right, right, huh? right. What the values that slave owners put into our minds? Three, two, three hundred, four hundred years ago, is what is ruling our lives today? <laughs> Why? The, the, can I tell you a story? Uh -huh. Down in Texas, where they, where Jim Crowism, I mean, hundred years ago, was very, very. This is a true story. It was in the the, um, the uh, one of the American magazines. True story. Would you speak up a bit for yes. me? Yes, I'm down in Texas. We had Jim Crowism yes. was very, very, you couldn't walk, black people couldn't almost walk on the street. And one Saturday night, a man was crossing a bridge, while he was crossing the bridge, he heard a sound from under the river, help, help, and he jumped into the river and rescued the man, only to discover that the man was a white man. Yes. And then he was questioned. When they took him to the police, they said, why did you rescue this man? The man said, I did not hear caller in the sound for help. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Mote, uh -huh. 
It's nice talking to Lovely you. Lovely talking to you too. And keep up the good work, you know. Thank you. All the best to you. We take a break. We come back shortly. Okay, thank you very much. We're back online. Hello? Good morning, Sir Perkins. Morning to you, ma'am. I'm calling in the behalf of my son in Punish Town Prison. Uh-huh. This is the third time them beat him since him in prison. Them beat him in there till he get mentally ill. Uh-huh. Them burst up in his head. That is the first time I went over there the fifth of this month. Yeah. And when I went over there, I was going to the box. Mm-hmm. And talking to him, mm-hmm. and all he could have said to me, say, she he can't hear me because them beat him in her ears, they film, and he don't hear one word until now what, a, oh what he said to him. I called Mr. Lindo, that is the head one, and say, I'm never know if that is when me make appointment to talk to him, and next was blue suit water by the name of Mr. Campbell tell him I know I can't get no satisfaction from them what until about Mr. Cam- anyway alright leave, leave Mr. Campbell out of it yes you can't get what no no satisfaction until now I'm a son in the air death cannot hear how long has he been in prison he's been in prison this year make three going three years March coming three years and how long was he sentenced sir? five years five years um, well, I suggest to you that um, the the thing to do is to is to have a lawyer look into the matter. Them beat him, Ali, and them is a Perkins eh? and get mad. Yes, um, I think that you need to have a lawyer look at, into the matter. Okay. Uh, has he told you who, who, how it came to be beaten like that? No, Mister Perkins. Because Jim Deffin can't hear what me I said to him. Yes. And he wasn't deaf when he went in there? No, Mr. Perkins. Um, I think that this is a matter for the courts. Right? Because the, when a man is sentenced to prison, the, the prison authorities have the, have an obligation to protect him against things like that, it would seem to me. Right? To carry out the sentence of the court. Yes, Mr. And not to add anything to it and no subtract anything from it. Right? Sometime ago, the first them beat him, Mr. Perkins, and get eight stitches in his head. Uh-huh. The second time, and get, I don't know much stitches, the second time, and get a Did he tell you who had beat him then? When I went over there, all his skin slash up with razor blade. On those occasions, did he tell you who had beaten him? He tell me, the f- I know the first one beat him. Yeah. Name. I yeah. don't know the rest. Uh-huh. Because he don't tell me the rest name. Yes. Well, what you do? Um, try and get hold of a lawyer, no? Okay, Mr. Perkins. And ask him to look into the matter for you. Okay, Mr. Perkins. To, to advise you as to what you might do? Yes, Mr. Perkins. Okay. Yes, Mr. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, hello? Hello, Mr. Perkins. Hi, how are you doing? I'm calling from St. Elizabeth. Yes. One district then called Congo Hole. Congo Hole? <laughs> yes, Mr. Perkins. Where part that? Let me know that. St. Elizabeth, Southfield. Southfield? Yes, but one district they call St. Elizabeth. Which part of Southfield that? Uh, lower Southfield, between Flagerman and Southfield. Uh-huh. We, the road is into a deplorable condition, Mr. Perkins. What, what name? Congo Hole? Congo, see you. <laughs> Congo Hole. Oh, Congo? Yeah. Congo Hole? Yes, sir. Oh, me never know that. <laughs> well. They must have passed there all the time, though. The road is into a deplorable condition. Yes. But even not talking about the road, mister, the people are not interested to fix the road. All they want is personal benefit. Yes. You know, when they go to the MP personal benefit. Yeah. Well, we well, can give them a blind. Uh-huh. Our MP was Donald Buchanan. Uh-huh. No. For the, from January, we don't have no water in the line, Mr. Perkins. Yes. You go to pay for water, they tell you that they don't have any chuck. No, can you tell me if they can get private chuck to transport water to us? You imagine children going to school and cannot bathe? Uh-huh. You cannot give them a cup of tea? Yes. It's very, very naughty, Mr. Mr. Well, Perkins. Let me tell you something. You know what it is, Bob? Our political leaders have contempt for us. Yeah. Because we sit down and take that and all we want is a little, 
I, uh, I mean, if, the, if the MP can give you a little, you know, yeah, a thousand dollar. <laughs> yeah, that is what they want. That is a good MP. No sir. Eh? No sir. Yeah, man. No sir. What? Uh -uh. No man. The MP can give you a thousand dollar. It can get you vote for five years. Five years. Yes, man. They walk and buy vote, man. They buy. Eh? They buy in vote. Them buying vote? Oh, yes, Mr. Perth. How much am paid for the vote? Only two thousand dollars. Two thousand. <laughs> well, there you are. <laughs> there you are. What can two thousand dollars buy? Can buy a thing, Mr. Perth. Yes. Okay, all right. So if we. You have we, we, me a thing, Mr. Perth. We have to put your power can't buy a pin, but it can buy a vote. Okay. <laughs> but dead for water, going kill me, Mr. Perth. Eh? Dead for water, going kill me. And Jack go and take up with the children, the girl people, them special. Your, whose fault is it in the final analysis? Whose fault is it? We the people. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I am calling to hear if you could say something that we could get some water. Well, I mean, you are the ones that must say it. Me, me don't have any talking on Mr. Perkins. Oh, you mean you don't have any talk? Because it's only the PMP them have talk, you don't have no talk. Well, Maybe so, but the, 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 the point is this, that just make the, P, go tell the PNP man that it's no use him come looking for your vote. Right? <laughs> if you, if you can't get water and road and whatever. So Not tell even, no water, no chuck. You've got to pay for the water. They say they can't take the money because there is no chuck. Yes. They are the head. They should get hired chuck to transport water to us. Yes. Because there's no water in the line from January. Oh God! Oh yeah, you're not paying water bills. I used to pay, but I have to ask them to cut it off because the bills coming and I get no water. The bills coming and you're getting no water. Right, Mr. Perkins. So you have to ask them to cut it off. Yes, Mr. Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hold on. When they weren't sending you any water, they were sending you bills. Yes, Mr. Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> My sister get bill up to yesterday and she oh, didn't get any water until January. How much is the bill? Well, I don't know how much is my sister bill, but I know she get bill up to yesterday <laughs> evening and she gets no water. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. You hear what Mr. Ennis tell you? That this is a totalitarian state? Yeah. Uh -huh. Where they're taking money from you to provide you with water, but not providing you with the water. And not getting no water. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very much for listening, Mr. Okay, Perkin. And then I want the people in the district to know that a voice is sticking out for water. Uh -huh. Because they are not concerned. Because they will get a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar, and they can go and buy water. Well, if that is what they want. Yeah. And know. they get like one for one chicken or one two for one rice. Uh -huh. They know nothing more. Uh -huh. But we have children to send to school. But I tell you something, you know. Why do people, if you. You know, if you had a tank in your yard, yeah, right, that could hold thirty thousand gallons of water, right? Yes. Which you would get off your roof when the rain fall. I have it in a Mr. Perkins. You have a tank? Yes, but it's only me neighbor complain. One lady complained Monday morning to me that our little girl gone to school and she don't get a beer and she don't get a cup of tea. Oh. I am all right so far, you know. I'm only sticking out for, you know, the children. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh -huh. And the politicians and the, and the people them who sell in their vote. Yes. Because they can't get a, a black jump to contain water free. They can't get cement. They can't get paint. They can't get fertilizer. And money. Uh-huh. Ah. Yes. I just want to share that thoughts with you, you know. <laughs> all right, Mom. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much for listening, Mr. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, hello? Hello? Hello, Mr. Perkins. Yes, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is the worker from Caribbean Casting. Caribbean Casting? Yes, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. I've been trying to get in you for the last three weeks now. Uh -huh. Yes, man. Finally get you now. Uh -huh. I think this issue need to hear to Jamaica. Uh, I, you what? This need to go to Jamaica. Yes. And... It's a long story, Mr. Perkins, but I can't make it short. Hello? Yes, I'm listening. Yes, man. This Caribbean casting issue, it fall underneath. Underneath politics, Mr. Perkins. Okay, Mr. Perkins? What are you saying? The Caribbean? 
Caribbean casting engineering. Fall underneath politics. Fall underneath politics. Uh -huh. What is uh, the Caribbean castings issue? That is the Caribbean casting system there. There is a set of man that them give it, then give to the company. It's a set of PMP man them. Who have no money. Who have no money, Mr. Perkins. Oh. Right? And them come there and them say a set of workers. They are there from about some 30 years, 40 years. And then come in with a system. And them run away all of us, Mr. Perkins. All of us, them run away. Right? Oh. Run we away. You were we working we... there? Yes, Mr. Perkins. And them Hold on a away... moment. Hold on a moment. Okay. Thank you very much. We're back here with you. Hello? Hello? No, we lost him. All right. Um, okay, one goes, another comes. Um, we have sitting with us in the studio, um, Mr. David Wong Ken, um, a noted lawyer, broadcaster, <laughs> businessman. What else? Author. Author. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm awfully sorry. No. My, my own laps, not No, <laughs> but of, of, of all the things I am, Wilmot, I'm a Jamaican. You're a Jamaican. And um, feel very passionate, fiercely passionate about my country. I was driving by and um, listening to your program. I was in the area. Yes. And um, the topics that you were discussing caused me to stop. One of them you haven't touched on yet. Um, you remember a few weeks ago, I came by and um, discussed with you the Errol Ennis article yes. regarding Olint. Yes. Um, I saw the newspapers this morning. I was on the breakfast club this morning. Uh -huh. I know. And um, I'm fearful that we're seeing another sort of draconian um, action by somebody. And um, whilst it may not be the financial investigation department or division, I see an attack on a financial institution that I think is unwarranted, and I wonder why. I wonder why. And I'm thinking about the NCB, the articles this morning about NCB being served with a criminal summons yes. uh -huh. for failing to to observe so, the um, the. Transactions. The threshold reports, number one, uh -huh. and number two, the um, the Money Laundering Act. Yes, yes. I made some inquiries after I left the Breakfast Club this morning, and I've come to understand that whilst the newspapers, both newspapers, have reported that the transactions concern U.S. currency, the Gleaner, I think, had it at 20 million U.S. dollars. Yes. The Observer had it at 27 million U.S. dollars. A uh, little difference. Little difference, but I understand that no U.S. dollars at all were involved. Oh, is that so? And I also understand very reliably that the amounts that are involved was about 50 million Jamaican dollars, uh -huh. which is less than a million U.S. dollars. Yes. And it involved transactions, several transactions, six or seven transactions. Uh -huh. So it's not as if... It was $50 million in one transaction. Uh -huh. I also understand that the complaint of events occurred very shortly after the takeover of NCB by the Leachin Group. Mm -hmm. um, so these would be things that would have been perpetuated, I would imagine, before. Yes. Or were in train before. Yes. And in fact, they were discovered by NCB after some rudimentary reorganization of their departments, because I understand the reporting functions of the bank when taken over by Leachin was very poor. So it was discovered by the bank, and the reports were made. Five of six transactions were reported uh -huh. when discovered. Uh -huh. One is outstanding. I understand that the legislation that requires the threshold reports that legislation has no time frame requirements. In other words, the breach has taken place, but the legislation doesn't provide that you must report it within a certain period of time. Yes. So one report is still outstanding. When that might have been discovered, I don't know. It's so, it's, and I commented on it this morning. It's very curious to me that the offenses took place in 2003. The persons involved, the persons who have been held on to by the authorities for, for money laundering, etc. No, hold on. 
the offenses you say. But the transaction itself is not an offense. It's an offense not to report it. That's right. If it is above a certain That's amount. That's right. But uh, it, does this apply to transactions in Jamaican dollars? Yes, I would imagine it does. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't know that answer. But uh -huh. in any event, the, the persons who were arrested were arrested in 2003. The transactions that took place involving the bank were 2003. Uh -huh. The reports were... And but those they, persons weren't arrested um, we're talking because about, of those transactions? No, they were not. No. And in fact, as I understand it, it was because of the arrest of these certain persons. It was because of that that the bank became vigilant over those accounts. And in fact, how, what really happened was one of the gentlemen made an application or made a, with, uh, made a, a request from, for withdrawal at, the, at a Linstead branch of the NCB for 20 odd million Jamaican dollars and the bank said no. And that I think, I think how the story goes, that is what sort of piqued everybody's interest in the bank to say, let's look at these things. This is after he had been arrested? Around the same time. Uh -huh. But this now happened in late 2003, September. The reports were made within the first half of 2004. And as explained to me, and I really hold no brief for NCB. In fact, I'll, I have reason to be very, very annoyed with NCB. But I think there's a deeper principle here. So I'm kind of trying to set aside my annoyance. Uh -huh. So by the time the bank gets its systems back in place and finds these errors, makes the, the report, and it's them who make the report. It's not as if the FID, Financial Investigation Department, discovers it. The bank discovers it. The bank makes a report. Right? Uh -huh. Okay. No. 2007, a policeman shows up with a summons, a criminal summons, you know, summons for criminal action uh -huh. against a bank. And I'm, what the question that screams at me is why? Why? Why is a bank? And this has, in my understanding, I can't think of any other occasion. This has never happened before. This is a bank that took over very poorly run operation put systems in place, discovered the, 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 the breach, the statutory breach, made the reports, has done everything that it can possibly do to discharge its obligation under the law. Hmm? Uh -huh. And one transaction is outstanding, one report is outstanding. A policeman shows up in 2007 to charge him with a criminal offense. I'm not sure what the rationale is, Wilmot, but it makes me a little scared. In the, con in the context <laughs> of Mr. E Ennis uh, and the OLED, I'm, yes. I'm really becoming very scared. Uh -huh. And the question I keep that screams at me, and I can't find an answer, and it's one of the reasons I've come here to ask you what you think the answer is. Why? Well, look here. Um, I think that the government is in a bit of a panic right um, the debt is expanding the government is no better off in terms of the the economy being able to support the debt right what it needs is to be able to borrow more money and it wants to be able to borrow on the domestic market and it seems to me that things are turning in a way um, on the domestic market so you think with all this Olin thing. No, but why attack NCB? Well, NCB. I don't know. It, I mean, this sounds like a kind of... And it may not be the government making the attack. Uh -huh. Granted, it's a policeman who shows up with the yes. summons. Uh -huh. I, I'm not here accusing FID or yes. the Ministry of Finance or uh -huh. the government generally. Uh -huh. I'm trying to understand what would motivate this kind of an action now. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering, well, not my own speculation is that maybe Mr. Leachin poses a threat to somebody. Maybe yeah. Mr. Leachin is a, a loose cannon on the deck. Uh -huh. I am not sure. Yes. But, but am I, am I, am I well, wrong to some, be concerned There's here? something that needs to be explained. There's no question about that. Right? Because the information that goes, and, and I, I'm really critical now of the newspapers, Wilma, the information that goes to the newspapers is flawed. Yes. No U.S. currency at all. Involved, well, certainly not in a magnitude of 27 million US dollars. This is not surprising in the Jamaican media, you know. But Wilmot, this I. This is not the first time. But Wilmot, that, eh? I picked up a telephone. I called someone who I knew connected to the bank. 
I made inquiries. She gave me a story. I called another person. They gave me exactly the same story. The matter is in court on the 23rd of February. So, I mean, if I'm lying or yes. they were lying to me, it will soon come out in court. Yes, yes. Why couldn't the newspaper reporter pick up the telephone? In fact, I'm telling you something. If I were those newspapers, I'd be scrambling f- to make an apology real quick. Uh-huh. Really quickly, because uh-huh. this kind of report must be damaging to the bank and yes. it's not entirely accurate from my yes. understanding yes if i were these guys <laughs> I'd, be, <laughs> I'd be looking for my lawyer right now yes you know uh-huh. no i'm not pushing anything on ncb or anybody no, else no. but it seems so plainly flawed that it it seems malicious to me and and i need to ask the question why in the context of errol ennis and what he said why, why is this happening why is this happening wilmot I don't know. They, they, uh, the only thing I can think about is panic. Or distraction when or, when yes, elections are coming. Or whatever. distraction when Cricket World Cup is going yes. to, to happen. Yes. Somebody needs to step up. But you know, there's another matter um, related to this. And that is the business of the Americans um, claiming extradition for these men. Yes. And um, they have not even, the courts in Jamaica don't seem to me to be even saying, look here, you need to give us the evidence on which you are relying. Presumption of guilt. uh, Yes. I've heard Clive Mullins on that. Uh I I think so, yes. I I think I heard him on it. Um, But they've had these people locked up now for a couple of years. If... Am I right? Um, They are in remand, as I understand it. Uh Hold, Hold on just a moment. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online. Um, Yes, we were talking about... um, about this business of extradition. Right. Right? Right. The courts in Jamaica, don't, I don't get the impression that they are saying to the Americans, let us see what evidence you have. Convince us that these persons, um, um, prima facie, have committed offenses for which they, we should send them to be tried in the United States. Mm-hmm. Right? And then when President Bush gets up and calls these people drug kingpins, right? Are they likely to get a fair trial in the United States? And is the Jamaica, are the Jamaican authorities concerned as to whether Jamaican citizens, do they see themselves as having an obligation to protect Jamaican citizens, right? And not to allow them to, to, to be carted away into injustice? Well, a couple of things, Wilmot. Firstly, I, I am absolutely dead against the drug trade. Absolutely yes, against no that, against about. all kinds of criminality. Yes. So I want that on the table yes. so that that's out of the way. Uh-huh. The courts in Jamaica and the Jamaican government have an obligation to protect the citizens. Yes. They subscribe to a system that presumes innocence. Yes. Um, it would seem to me less than discharging their obligation were they not to make the inquiries that you've indicated that ought to be made. Yes. Particularly in the context where the American government that (laughs) is seeking extradition Uh has demonstrated a propensity to abuse even their own. Yes. Rules of of justice. Yes, and I simply point to to to, Absolutely. to Cuba. And then don't forget that they have not committed themselves to the International Criminal Court. Right. right. So so the no Americans. American is going to be sent abroad to be tried. Exactly. Uh-huh. Okay. So the Americans hold themselves out as being above the rules and laws that yes. would govern yes. lesser people yes. like Jamaicans. Uh-huh. In that context, if I were if I were in the position to to grant or not an order for extradition, uh-huh. I'd want to make serious scrutiny. Now, 
I am of the view that our Jamaican courts have not made that scrutiny. Yes. And I have to again ask myself why. Uh-huh. What is the reason? Uh-huh. But and there was a case recently here mm-hmm. where an American diplomat here in Jamaica um, made a state, um, submitted a statement to the courts in connection with an extradition hearing, right? Um, but when the defense asked that she be present to be cross-examined about it, she said, no, she has diplomatic immunity, right? <laughs> and the court upholds that, as I understand yeah. it, right? But then does not say that, fine, all right, you have diplomatic immunity, we can't order you to come to be cross-examined. But in that event, if you cannot face cross-examination, then thank you very much, keep your, um, yeah. keep your statement. Not exactly on the same point, but related, Wilmot, and I just want to point this out. We in Jamaica allow into evidence illegally obtained evidence. Yes. Okay, so Uh our courts, our judges have the discretion to allow or to wait evidence that police have obtained illegally. Uh (laughs) That that alone, Wilmot, promotes kick down and tear down kick down a door and, and get the evidence however you want. Yes. Take evidence that witnesses can't be cross-examined on, etc., etc. And it seems to me that we've sold out ourselves, whether for political expediency, whether in, in panic to crime, whether in relation to grants or, or loans or financial assistance from other countries, etc. We have become far less independent than we were at the day of yes. independence. We have no respect for our citizens. In this well, country. that is what caused me to come here, Wilmot, uh-huh. to be very honest. That is what caused me to be here. And of late, I've had to, to consider the plight of, of our children's homes. You will recall December at the SOS village, two children perished in a fire. Yes. Okay. The SOS village, Wilmot, as I understand it, had been without water for oh approximately four months prior oh to the fire. Hell. Approximately four A months. children's home? SOS, which is, uh-huh. is, is one of our more recognized yes, yes. children's homes. Not only were they without water for roughly four months, Wilmot, but the Ministry of Health knew of it. And the, the children's, the, the CDA people, knew of it so no, no hold on I'm not saying that the fire is as a consequence of not having water yes, yes. but you can imagine were there water there uh-huh. how much more effectively yes. one could have prevented fire uh-huh. so I don't know whether the fire was caused by a lack of water yes. or not yes having an insurance home no water for four years for four months forget about the fire is appalling yes. But having children perish in a children's home where there is a fire without water uh-huh. is, is, in my view, almost criminal negligence. Uh-huh. But if, if they didn't perish from, from the fire, they might well have perished from something else, disease, <laughs> right? I understand you. How do you have children in a children's home, right? I mean, it's bad enough in the family, but to go and concentrate... Children. A number of children. Can't wash their hands with piped they water, will They can't wash their hands. And we talk Sorry. about putting people first. Yes. We talk about human capital being the future of our country. Uh-huh. What? <laughs> I mean, where? What kind of absolute nonsense are we up to in this country, Wilmot? And know. and one of the one of the hurtful things is that the majority of us put up with it, yes. turn our back on it, yes. ignore it, yes. and don't give a damn about it. Yes. Yes. And, and that is, is really inexcusable. So as much as I want to blame the Minister of Health and the Child Protection people, I have to blame civil society. Even more. Or equally as much. I, I think there are more to blame. Because if we had created, the, if we had taken an intelligent 
and self-respecting attitude towards these matters. Um, I don't think that that any political, any government would have... Um, it, it is when the government feels, the party in office feels, that it can come and drop a little too nanny, you know, and, and get the vote. Yeah. That it is prepared to do these things. Right? You're, you're right on that, Wilmot. And, and until we, we do embrace this, this, this notion that human capital uh-huh. is the most, it's the all important yes. capital that we have. It's not money, it's not roads, it's not factories. The value of our people is what make all those things possible. Yes. Hmm? It's what make all those things possible. Uh-huh. I had bid on a, on a property out in St. Thomas Wilmot. Um, it was an old abandoned factory, and I won't tell you which one. Uh-huh. And I had submitted a, a, a bid to buy it from Finsac. Reasonably low bid, but this factory had been out there vacant for maybe 10, 15 years. Uh-huh. On the eve of getting the factory, of, 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 of it being approved, I got the information that it was bought for a higher bid. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know who bought it, and I know that there are political connections. Recently, as see, and, and the factory consisted of about four substantial buildings in a way. Uh-huh. Buildings that would cost you millions of dollars to replace. Yes. And I've noticed recently that they've begun to tear down the buildings to take the steel out. Which means now, in that community, you're going to have another derelict piece of place, broke down work nothing, more hundreds of people out of work, so that somebody could extract the steel, the A-frames out of the building will not. Uh-huh. Eh? And what? my proposal to, to buy this place, you know, wasn't just to buy it, you know, but to put in a center for education, etc., etc. Yes, yes. Hmm? And that was known. I made my position clear. Yes. And him sell it, Wilmot. <laughs> just to tear it down to take out steel, and you have so many people now out of work. Yes. We we just we just I get the sense you see Wilmot that things are just crumbling daily. Yes. yes. Five people shot in Bog Walk, Wilmot. Eh? <laughs> this 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 year alone. A hundred and seventy three. Is it? But I tell you something worse. What is really even bothering me worse is, is the amount of police killings. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And if people don't make a connection between police killings and a case like Janice Allen, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. And, the, and just just to, to bore the listeners one more time in a Wilmot, 13 year old Janice Allen shot by a policeman's gun. Hmm? No question uh-huh. about it. Yeah. The policeman remains on duty in a Wilmot. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. The policeman remains on duty. 13 year old Johnny shot by a policeman's gun and the evidence and the process is so subverted and corrupted that you can't get a, you can't even get a trial yes right yes can't even get a trial and it but happened again recently you know yeah in, in well let me ask you something in that case when they go to court and now they process could have been entered could have been entered and should have been entered yes anymore. instead of which they call the jury to, to say not guilty. Uh, <laughs> but you know, which Hold is on one minute. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online and we're talking to Mr. David Wonken, uh, a lawyer, an author, <laughs> a talk show host. Uh, and a Jamaican. And a Jamaican. When, um, when we were about to break, Wilmot, I was about to tell you what in my view is, is almost the worst of the Janice Allen matter. Uh-huh. That is the court's reluctance to protect its own process yes. from abuse. At this stage, as attorneys for M- Millicent Forbes, Janice Allen's mom, we've been fighting to have judicial review of the proceedings at the criminal court uh-huh. that, that ended up in the acquittal. And the basis of that, of course, is that we're saying the acquittal was, a, was a, obtained by fraud. Uh-huh. And we're saying that the court's process was abused that resulted in this fraud. And had the court known, they would never have come to that conclusion. 
And Wilmot, at every stage, we've been met with serious opposition. I wonder why. One would think that the court would want to protect its own process. Yes. That it would recognize, in fact, that it would exercise its muscles uh-huh. to, 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 to protect its own process. And at every stage, Wilmot, we've met serious res- resistance. Now, if the court doesn't want to protect its own process, what conclusion do you draw from that? That's a Rubik's Cube to me, Wilmot, and I've never been able to do the Rubik's Cube. I see. Now, uh-huh. we've recently gotten leave to appeal to the Privy Council. Uh-huh. Whatever comes of that is, is to be seen. But I suspect that it's going to be a pretty embarrassing um, judgment. Maybe we won't win, but I'm looking forward to seeing the comments from yes. the Privy Council. Yes. You know? Well, Mott, I, I, I know we don't have a lot of time, and yes. I want to impose on you. Um, campaign financing, we've been hearing a lot about that recently. And one of the problems with, with campaign financing is that the big donor, whoever it is, um, sometimes we'll make good donations, sometimes not, but the big donor, I think, has expectations. Right? Makes a big donation to the PMP, will have ex- expectations. Make a big donation to the Jamaica Labour Party, will have expectations. Um, and that's been an ongoing problem for Jamaica. I know that the best safeguard is for the parties to to, to obtain political contributions from the widest spectrum of don- donors that they can. You know, small yeah. small amounts, but on a wide scale. Yes. I want to encourage Jamaicans to, to go online and to visit the PMP, I think it's peoplesnationalparty.com and the jamaicalabourparty.com. Visit those sites. Make assessments of what goes on and utilize the, the donation feature that those websites... I know the Jamaica Labour Party has a feature. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that the PMP must also have. Uh-huh. Um, but go online, jamaicalabourparty.com and, and make those donations from as many people as possible. P- peoplesnationalparty.com and make those donations from as many people as possible. I think that is really where our campaign financing safeguards really lie is ordinary people contributing to the process. Uh-huh. And I really want to encourage people... Not to waiting on Traffic Euro. Not waiting on a Traffic Euro <laughs> or any big industrialist or any big hotelier or any big newspaper owner or anybody yes, else. Yes. This is our process. And unless we as people have a financial input in this thing, mm-hmm. we're not going to hold anybody accountable. When I put my $100 there, I want to know my $100 is well spent by whoever I... I I, yes. I support. Yes. If I support a particular party and they end up in the opposition, that opposition has a role to play. And I want to make sure that my $100 is well spent. But the if problem, they end up in government... The problem with that is that the $100 man has been looking for a, a Joshi. Um. <laughs> that's, that's because our government, our governments will not have devalued uh-huh. the, the, the people of Jamaica. Yes. They have devalued it, and in that, Wilmot lies the answer to crime. Yes. Unless we can have people reevaluate themselves, consider themselves as, as being vital, critical human beings. And see this country and its, its order as, as being there to provide them with opportunity. And not the government right? with opportunity. Yes. Not yes. the government with opportunity. I've recently heard where... where Senior members of previous governments, Wilmot, are trips in over Nigeria, trips in over Europe, all over the place in high society functions. Uh-huh. No, <laughs> I'm wondering, Wilmot, and I heard yourself and Clive Mullins speak about this. Yes, about the Proceeds of Crime Act. Uh-huh. I wonder if that will have any sort of retroactive component. Will, in other words, that act allow somebody to look back on a politician, even coming from the 70s? Or from the 80s, uh-huh. or from the 90s, uh-huh. or from the, the, the 2000 uh-huh. decade, and say, what? Oh, how, how did your how did you come to this? You, you were, a, you were a, a, what is it, a quantity surveyor maybe? Uh-huh. Um, you, you were this or that in the government with this amount of salary. Uh-huh. Um, where, where do these civil row suits come from? <laughs> huh? will, that, will that legislation 
allow us to do that, Wilmot. You're talking about revolution. And what you are probably doing, sir, is encouraging the strengthening of the um, the Gestapo technique. Well, <laughs> right. I'm glad you brought me back to that, Wilmot, <laughs> because I'm worried about what I see. The NCB article in the newspapers. Uh-huh. Really worried. I'm very, very worried about the children in the children's homes. Uh-huh. Um, Mr. Mr. Daly, I think, is a ministry, Minister of Health. Uh-huh. Should be called into Parliament. Mr. Daly, tell us what the dickens is going on with the children's homes. Yes. Tell us. You're not here as a member of Parliament. You're here as a Minister of Health. Tell us. That is that is what we need, Wilmot. Is is that that yes, ability sir. to demand accountability from uh-huh. our people, from our government? And I don't care which government. If the Jamaica Labour Party were to get into government, Wilmot, and do the same foolishness, yes, I promise you, I'll be here with you, cussing the hell out of them. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, I'm really not too interested in, in who is in government. What I'm interested in is good it's government. It's the quality of government that yeah. we get. Good yes. government, Wilmot. We deserve yes. it. But uh, let me say that the people, the people have an important contribution to make the good government. Right? Because what they will tolerate is what they will get. 100% with you on that, Wilmot. Yes. 100% no. with you on it. We need to, um, we need to sit up on... Bob Marley said we must um, stand up for our rights. I heard you. I heard you asking the, the very important question: Why is it we are being impacted by impositions of three, four hundred years ago? Yes. Are we so stupid intellectually that 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 what pertained three, four hundred years ago we can't way out of it. think our way out of it? Yes. Absolutely. That that that's too incredible. <laughs> And when when you think that this has been has been said by one of our political leaders, who was in office for you know very limited time, but nonetheless spent a good you know ten years, mm-hmm. nearly ten years in office, and um, <coughs> I mean you know what 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 was the effort that was made? to get rid of these um, of these ideas inculcated from from slavery in fact you're right you know Wilma these ideas could only remain with us because someone didn't want them to go away absolutely or if not someone some numbers of us some some of us seem to think that it was would have had to think that it was in our interest for them to be perfect Perpetuated, yeah, right. and and celebrating things like Emancipation Day, Wilmot. Yes, I think is is utter nonsense. Uh, absolutely, it's nonsense. <laughs> and what is worse, talking about reparations, right? We ought to be giving ourselves reparations for for the damage that has been done to this society by the perpetuation. Of yes. these habits of mind yeah. in, 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 that we uh, got from slavery. It, it's a weak people, Wilmot, yes. who look to blame external factors. Uh, absolutely. It's a weak people. And one of the things that we need to understand, sir, is that history wasn't made and put down some long time ago. Right? History is being made today. And we will be judged by it. Absolutely. And there is nothing indelible about the history that was was made 500 years ago, right? If we acquired patterns from it and are continuing to use those patterns, whose fault is that but our own? Un- unless those patterns it turn out to be useful. To be useful to us. Fine, if, you if must they are useful and we want them, yeah, fine. You must yes. learn from history. Absolutely. Nobody is advocating that you ignore history, but certainly don't keep making the same mistakes. Then no. you really are a buffoon. No. You know? And this idea that the, the, the Queen owes us a living. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. It is, it's despicable. Um, I don't know. I don't know where we're going. Well, Wilmot, the future lay entirely within our capability. Yes. We, can, we make that choice, you know. Yes. Do we want to continue the way we are or do we want something different? Yes. 
That's nobody else's choice. Yes. But our own. Our own choice. It's not the government fault. It's not because it's Jamaica this. It's yes. not because the Queen. It's not because of Africa. Uh-huh. It's our choice. Our choice. And when we choose, don't blame anybody for the choice we make. No. Right? Well, I don't know. When is the election going to be? I really don't know. I would hazard somewhere around July. But I don't know. I'm, I'm not. You mean after the budget? You know, that's going to present some serious challenges. <laughs> Thank you. A budget can be, need be no more than, um, than some, some Mean, numbers meaningless piece of written paper. on a piece of paper. Right? Well, when would our ministers and, um, begin to challenge the minister? The when we say, come back, we can correct it. Yeah, but when, when will it be our Minister of Education says, I'm not supporting that budget until I see something in there for schools, etc.? Um, I don't think you're going... To, well, when, when Mr. Ennis becomes um, Minister of Education, you might see that. No. <laughs> Judging by the things he has been saying recently. Um, well, uh, anyway, I think we're heading into the news. Um... We'll be back here in about 20 minutes. Oh, I'm awfully sorry about that. Okay, uh, we're back online, eh? And we go now to our telephones. Hello? 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 Hello, Mr. Perkins. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Um, um, I'm very impressed with Mr. Golden proposal if he should win the election. I believe it's the first time I've ever heard one make such a good statement. What I is believe that? if he if he if he win if he if he win the election and put in three quarter of what he planned to do to have a change around Jamaica. What is he planning to do? What did he say? He spoke about the he spoke about the education system. Mm-hmm. He spoke also about the the justice system. Mm-hmm. What? And where, where was this? Where did he? Several times he spoke out. That that that's what he would he want to free education and would set up a a body to investigate police and so forth. And then he said that he would. You would take out um, two and a half percent of the budget for each MP, whether they are JLP or PNP, and that's the type of thing I would like to see happen. Mm. Because when you go to other countries like in the Caribbean, other Western Islands, and America, you go and see that you you don't know what in the area, you don't know whether is whether is Democrat or Republican or what the party may be. Mm. You have good road, water, good schooling good facility for medicine, clinic, and so forth, and the place is well kept. You don't have to say, well, this is a, this is a, this is a losing party, and so the area run down. This has been plaguing the country, and that's why we're not going anywhere. And I, I, I am glad for a man like that. I believe m- not many of the uncommitted voters must vote for a man like that, because that's something we will want. That's something we really want. I'm yes. not sure I'm happy about the... Idea of two and a half percent for each MP. Well, well, let us start. You know, left to the bu- it's left to the budget. Eh? It's left to what? How much the budget is? Yes, sir, but I, t- I tell you something. Um, I don't think that. Look here. Let us say that I live in Saint Elizabeth. Yeah. Right. And I therefore have an interest in uh, the well-being of Saint Elizabeth. Uh-huh. Right. But I also have a, an, an interest in the well-being of Kingston. Yeah. Right? And it may well be that um, 2.5% of the budget um, spent in Kingston to make it attractive as a place for, let us say, industrial investment. Uh-huh. Right? May in the end be more valuable to me and other people who live in St. Elizabeth, then would that amount of money spent on something in St. Elizabeth? You're following me? Yes, I'm following you. We are Jamaicans. We live in Jamaica, right? Yeah. And the development 
um, the economic development of Jamaica is of interest to us all. Right? Yeah. Wherever that development is being cited. You follow me? I'm following you. Now, people in St. Elizabeth can benefit if, if, if some factories are put up and people get jobs and all this kind of thing and are very active in Kingston. And if hotels are built and tourists are streaming into Montego Bay and into Ocherias. Right? But I believe it means, I believe he will um, put those in, in perspective as well. But well, maybe but so. But what, what I'm saying is that I don't see that um, the expenditure that is most valuable to me yeah. um, is that expenditure that is spent patching the piece of road right in front of my gate. Right? So what, when he says there are other expenditures far away from my front gate that yeah, yeah, may but be far more valuable to me. He's talking like you have something to do in the, in the community, uh -huh. the road to fix. Uh -huh. I saw a pipe is broken and with are running and nobody, a culvert has been blocked um, uh -huh. and so forth. And I know, have, there, I know that. Yes, well, right? I, 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 what, um, we, what, we ought to, what we ought to be trying to do is to create the, the, the wealth in the society that would allow us to deal with all of those things, wherever they are. But I don't, I'm not sure that that we necessarily benefit from from the allocation of resources on the basis of parish by, to uh, benefit constituents. By because hold, hold on just a moment for me. Okay, thank you very much. We're back on line, sir. Yes, Mr. Burke. Yes, I was saying that if Kingston and Montego Bay and Ocho Rios ah. are prospering, then the, the St. Elizabeth farmer is going to have a good market for his crops? Yes, yes. Yes. And, but on the other hand, I, I don't think anybody could disagree with the need to do something urgently and um, almost <laughs> radical about the justice system in this country and about the educational system in this country. And Mr. Perkins, if you... Many of our constituency, some are in a, in a shamble, some is in poor condition, uh -huh. because what? Some of these, these area, you have the opposition in them, uh -huh. and they starve them so as to let the people say, well, they didn't do anything for them since they came into office. Uh -huh. So they don't grant them any money to speak of in the area to work. Yes. And well. they treated them, but and, and in their, their, their MP area, it's booming. Yes. Many road, good roads, and, what do you think of all in Riversdale here? Riversdale, if you come and see Riversdale Road all before the police station, and Mr. Perkins, you would, you would be a... If I hear it's like that, the main road, dust, mud when rain falls, it's, it, you, it, you can lead your cow and tie like pants. And I'm sure if it was the PNP was in power. Um, MP was, it, was the MP was the PNP. It wouldn't be like that. You're obviously not a PNP man. Pardon me? I say I'm you're obviously a, not a, a PNP man. I'm not a PNP party. I'm like the people who work. I, I, in our area, uh -huh. there was two different, two people who we know work well. And there are two different parties, man. And I love them. They're not around again. That was, that was Jack Stevenson who was a MP. And you also have Janet Giles who was a JLP man. And those two men was, was, they, they did well. Uh -huh. I would walk from here to Montego Bay to vote for them uh -huh. without a cent. But, you know, what, what we're saying, this thing is going on too long in our country. When one side, when the other side, the opposition area suffer, suffer. Yes. With water, with road, with light. And you can name if a school has been, been um, this, uh, deteriorated in the, in the area. They don't move to fix those schools. They want the, the, the MP in that area to look bad. Uh -huh. You see, well, when they MP in that area looks bad, so the people in the meantime the people are suffering. But right? when they when they grant and the money they, and the chances there's a good chance that crime yes, may be yes, stimulated. That's true. And then the, the that man is going to come across to your constituency to go broke your house. Yes. And right? you see when the area look well throughout the country, what the government doesn't doesn't realise to know that the government the weather is the the government get the the, 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 the praise of it throughout the country. If yeah. you just make his area look well, 
And don't make the GLP or the opposition area look bad, or the PNP if it's the opposition. It reflects on him as well, and oh. the, gov- the ruling government as well, but they yes. don't look at that. Well. They don't look at that. And I'm glad for the... the, 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 uh, for the, 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 the it's the first I've seen somebody who, 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 who's, who's challenging to, to, to make the, uh, 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 a change like this. You'd have a different Jamaica. You'd have something like... You'd, you, when I go to Barbados, Burma, you'd have traveled to other country. And when I see all those places, you, they, they, I tell you, I, I'm, I'm, right now I want even people to come to look for me from our overseeing my area here in Riversdale, in Riversdale. And the way the roads stay, I wouldn't, I, 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 a great friend of mine want to come from Bermuda. I'd, I have to try to play, play, play her down that not to come because the road is, is a horrible condition and it's for years. Yes. For years. And water. And they can do better. This country have, have a lot of water. And the money should be invested for people to get water. Water is life. That is just word saying, but it, by the government. But water is really life. And they don't move to that people have this commodity at will, at their water or own will. You know? Yes. It's a, it, it's a shame. <laughs> yes, I thank is. God I, I, I see somebody in that direction where I'm moving. And I wish the people might wake up and give this that gentleman a chance. All right, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. All yes. the best to you. Okay, hello? 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 Yes, good hello. afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Um, Mr. Perkins, um, the gentleman that called earlier on, um, you had him on a boat for about a long time. Um, before you go to lunch break. Yes. Um, I think that gentleman, at least we can say, yes, there is hope. You know? <laughs> yes. And uh, it is so sad to know. Uh-huh. It is so sad to know that um, he tried to buy that property, just like myself, tried to buy a piece of property in Grand Senior about the kitchen. Um, you know, it wasn't go through the way it's supposed to go through. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, um, that gentleman is, you know, I, I, I just have to give Mr. Up. David Wonkin. So that he is. Uh-huh. Mr. Wong Cheng? Wong Cheng. There's a possibility I know him. Wong Cheng, yeah. There's a possibility I know him. And, uh, you know, you know, it's just that to show that um, there is hope if we come together as a people and work together. And, um, you know, Mr. Mr. Perkins, I don't know if you've, um, if you've ever heard about which chairman of very, very, um, what do you call it now, um, you know, research, do you research and so forth. You have never heard about the Willie Lynch syndrome. The, uh, the what syndrome? The Willie Lynch syndrome. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Mr. Perkins, when you look at certain things, every day you come on the air and everything talking, and you see um, the way... Would you speak up a bit for me? Been, Your voice is tending yeah, to break when you, back to the lip. I'm calling from overseas. I'm calling from Florida. Sorry. Yes, yes. yes. So, um, well, so I'm hearing you well now. When you realize... That you, yeah, when you, um, you know, when you look at it and um, you say, you know, is it, um, we're still treated 500 years ago, we're treating the same way right now, and we can't realize it because some of us is not um, educated enough about the system, about our race, about our well-being, how we're supposed to live. Is it that, that same story going on? Well, you know, sir. I'm wondering. Yes, go ahead. Hello? You're wondering what? Yeah, I'm wondering. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm wondering if it is that same story going on. Because if we elect these um, members of parliament to do a job, and um, they're not doing it, and people have to run away from those um, days of getting a dollar, um from politician. I can give you an incident for one, Mr. Perkins. Um, a couple of years ago, about um, 10 years ago, I um, called you and I was telling the issue about uh, where I was born there in Grandspin. And um, the, um, there was this lady running for a seat there against Carl Samuda. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, she said to me, um, you know, I was there in the meeting and I started to ask her the question, what is it 
she's about, what is it she's going to do for the community, what um, she can put on the table for me to say I will vote for her and for me to tell my other friends and, and, and neighbors to vote for her. Mm-hmm. Um, my cousin, my family that were very big in the politics, into the politics and everything, they were saying, and other people were saying, you know, he can't ask those questions and I was down on me, you know. But I said, it is my right um, to to ask those questions because it is my well-being, it's my future I'm talking about here. And if you're not going to lay, lay out everything on the table to let me know what are you about, what you're going to do for the community, what you're going to do for the country as a whole, um, you know. And the lady, after the meeting finished, she realized, you know, the type of person I am. She said, um, you know, Mr. Nelson, um, here's my card and I want you to call me. And um, I said, okay. And um, didn't call her. A couple of weeks after that, I saw her again. Mr. Nelson, how come you haven't called me? Um, you know, I have something in the office for you, you know. So I said, um, you know, I, I didn't bother to call her because I know what it's about. You know, I know what it's about and I don't think she can spell it out. Uh, my people filling out myself. And, um, you know, from then um, on, I just believe in, you know, um, try to educate myself about my culture, try to educate myself about my well-being, try to educate myself about what I've gone on in the past, yeah, you know. Um, the other day I went to the library because I'm doing a lot of research on Jamaica. And um, I was watching the program when... Um, the big casting was in Jamaica and Jamaica shut down for a while and um, I remember big that um, what casting was it? Um, yeah, I think it was um, when his um, gas price went up that time I think oh. it was in the early 90s oh, oh I see yes uh-huh. yeah, in the early, uh-huh. yeah in the early 90s and um, I think the, those days were the shell scandal too as well and um, I was there and um, you know say you know I look at this, um, you know, program, and I look at it, Manly was alive at that time. And, um, yes, um, the IMS, when you borrow money from the IMS, the IMS have certain uh, way of you to spend the money. But at the same time, we put it in, 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 in government to make sure you do it the right way, um, to do certain things the right way. So, you know, you let us down. You let us down of spending the money um, in the wrong way, but the IMS is a claw of um, after the World War, Mr. Perkins, they come with this IMS thing to for the poor nations, mm. you know, me, to um, you know bring us down more as well. But the government just look into these things and run to get the money and then put us we in debt. The young well, I don't know that the IMF was was set up particularly for poorer nations. Sir. Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't want to speak up? No, I, I think the IMF was there, was originally set up to um, help countries to overcome temporary um, falls in their temporary problems in their balance of payments, so that um, right. the, the fact that the country's the value of a country's exports fell didn't mean that it would have to. Um, it would have to, you know, import less and therefore spread the problem, right. you know, throughout its... Uh, that yeah, would be original purpose. I remember um, looking, at, okay. looking at that video, video eh? um, and uh, I can see in St. Elizabeth, some of the, farmer, the farmers was literally crying to say these imports, carrots, import potatoes and all these apples and all these things. I've heard them. And you look at these things and you say, these are the things that push people to do, you know, go into different things and try to do this um, illegal stuff to get money because of um, the situation of government, the way our government has misangled yes. the money, misangled the, the funds of the country. And um, Absolutely. people in debt. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Eh? Nice hearing from you. Any? Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online. Hello? Hello? Yes, good afternoon. Yes, Mr. Perkins. Uh huh. Back on the line again. Yes. Yes, man. It's the man from Caribbean casting. Oh, yes, uh huh. Yeah, man. As I was saying, the players fall underneath some real, 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 real arm dose, Mr. Perkins. Real what? Arm dose. Oh? Yes, man. So, 
in the 90s, with the place closed down 1999, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. And the receiver come in in 2001. And the receiver run the place for one year and bring the place to a standard, which is very good. Them go overseas, then go to Guyana, Trinidad, all over, and then bring in work. Them bring in work, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. When them bring in the work now, them say them cannot keep it, them got to sell it. Them have to sell it. Uh -huh. So there is what a Trinidad company. This is the, the government said this. Yeah. Who, who said that they had to sell it? The, the uh, receiver. Uh -huh. so but that was, was a receiver put there by the government, yeah. by the Ministry of Finance. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, there was a Trinidad company who were interested in the company. Mr. Danny Roberts. Don't do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hello? Don't do that. Okay. Hello? See that they rather sell it to a local company, not to the foreign man then. Right, Mr. Perkins? Uh -huh. When they when the receiver hand it over to them, they will have like something like some fifty million dollar worth of job on the floor. When them come in, them 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 use out all of those jobs. And in the meanwhile, they never go overseas to look anything more. Them just use what them come into shop and see. That is the new man them who them sell it to. And when them come in, them start to do the job, they go out. When that job finish, them have nothing more for us. Because them never look in any job. I asked one of the manager why them don't send man overseas like the receiver. In them told me that they don't have any money to send anybody overseas to look job. Anyway, Mr. Perkins, go on and go on and go on. Tell them this I have man there for working for forty five years all of them life. One day in two thousand and four them lay off some of them on them. Right, Mr Perkins? I heard you. Then Mr Perkins, here comes our phone. The dread them who the JP is something like some seven million dollars. Never pay it. The JP is come in and lock off them light. Mr Perkins. Them use some generator. And the generator them run up and burn up, it kind of overuse it and burn it up. So them don't have no light. It reach a stage that them sell off half of the land to one of them friends. Them sell off the scrap light, the, the scrap yard. And find you sell off the scrap yard, Mr. Perkins. You close on Caribbean casting because the scrap yard is the mother of Caribbean casting. Them don't, them don't buy any scrap, Mr. Perkins, and them sell off the scrap that was dear to one of them friends who now use half of that line, that land, who doing um, cement thing over there, bagging up cement over there. Mr. Perkins, Caribbean casting is not longer a, a workplace. It's a nursery. Uh, Mr. Perkins, is a nursery. Uh -huh. It's a place where you have every year, you have at least four different schools from all over the island come there to come up and job experience Mr. Perkins so it's not longer a roof place it's a, it's a nursery for the youth who live in school and Mr. Perkins have one such man come inside there and lock down the place Mr. Perkins I, I want to know if Mr. Roger Clark I got to put myself into this Mr. Roger Clark don't know about it him don't know about it. But Mr. Roger Clark is not the Minister of Industry. No, sir. but it fall on a sugar. It fall on a the sugar. Oh, and it I does? Hear, and I hear Mr. Roger Clark. I want to know, Mr. Perkins, where is the where is the sugar cane repair job going? Because if it go overseas, you have to have US dollar to bring it overseas. Right, Mr. Perkins? Uh -huh. And you have a place right into your backyard. Right into your backyard, which is if the man, if you call a workers all time, bed they left my at night and Mr. Perkins, he can get up and then go to the place, go to the sugar cane, repair job for the, for the fuck to get going. Mm -hmm. So I want to know now, if they, if them lock down Caribbean Cafe now, and one of the sugar cane company, who in the full swinging at the sugar cane and it break down, where that sugar cane thing was Mr. Perkins? 
Well, I don't know, do but no is, is Caribbean Castings locked down now? Mr. Perkins, what them do, Mr. Perkins? Them have four people in the office working there. Nobody out in the shop floor. Because they don't have any light. Nobody in the shop? Nobody in the shop floor, Mr. Perkins. Over 200 man there road. 200 man, and it don't only affect 200 man. If it affects 400 person, because those 200 users imply somebody in the yard. Right, Mr. Perkins? Uh-huh. Dan, Mr. Danny Roberts in drum ship. Mr. Vincent Morrison, when the place closed on, Mr. Vincent Morrison said, Uno should not get Uno redundancy and start a fresh thing, Mr. Perkins. Mr. Danny Roberts said, No. Mr. Vincent Morrison said, Yes. We, we, we never understand those two guys here. So anyway... Well, we let me ask you something. Point. So what is the position now? The position is right now, Mr. Perkins. I get to understand that them planning... I don't know what them planning, but they have no workers down there. What them do? Them don't want to definitely close it down to make it look no way. So them have two to four person into the office working to make it look like the place is still going on, <laughs> which is nothing because they don't have any light. What them do? The same man who them sell the piece of land is that same man. All right, all right. Leave that, man, leave that man out of it. Yes, but um, I, I, I think that I must, uh, you know, I must try to investigate this one Mr. because um, it's a serious thing, Mr. Perkins. It's, it's, it's difficult to see serious. why a company like that should be out of business. That's what I am saying, Mr. Perkins. Mr. Perkins is a place where you used to have man come buy, come sell Caribbean gas uh-huh. scrap. No, I see scrap gathering all over the country, putting into container, shipping away. Uh-huh. Mr. Perkins, that thing's like a fire agent. I think like a manual cover into 2007. Where we usually manufacture those things, Mr. Perkins. Mm. And now when I go on work site, I don't see nothing for Jamaica from Caribbean casting. And I see it's pure, fun mm. stuff like fire hydrant and manual cover where you use cast iron and melt up. Well, is it that uh, there is enough business available for you, for the company Mr. in Jamaica? Mr. Perkins, job is out there, Mr. Perkins. Eh? Jab is out there, but they need to go and look it. Jab is there, Mr. Perkins. So how how the housing scheme that building that using fire hydrant and manual cover and frame, Mr. Perkins? Where they do do things come from overseas, and we make them same place here. Yes, Mr. Perkins. Nothing more than them cannot manage a place, and they don't want to leave it. Them do want to leave the place because that's a place where employed two hundred and admin over the years. Right, Mr. Perkins, so I cannot understand who, who the government allowed that. What I am banking on, Mr. Perkins, then is saying the sugarcane industry in trouble. And if you have the factory, who to repair them, and it closed down. And the NF Trinidad, you just send them job here. Guyana send them job here, and all those stuff. The last project doing that job is the statue up by the park, and the same thing. It's a brilliant place, Mr. Perkins. Yes. It's not any full, full place. All it needs is good management structure. And when I look on it, Mr. Perkins, I see the man them take the man chin that money. And don't give the man them, them job. I give back them the money. Yes. No, that is not good good about Jamaica, Mr. Perkins. All right. We we'll have to look into it, sir. Exactly. We'll have to Mr. see whether we can get in touch with. Huh? Mr. And find out what is happening. Then give me uh, this redundancy, Mr. Perkins. Uh, oh, you were made redundant? Yeah, and from two May, from 2005, Mr. Perkins. Uh-huh. And in 2006, May, the 31st of May, I was supposed to get the first payment. And no, it's 2004, uh, four payment for the money, four payment. And then don't put any figure on the paper. So they could give you anything when they come. And now the last payment is supposed to be February the, the 28th. And you don't get the first payment from 2006. Which you got to be made so you haven't got any, any of that redundancy money? You, I don't get anything, Mr. Perkins, oh. because I have the paper in front of me. Uh-huh. And nothing. And it's 2007. Now you're supposed to get the last one at the end of this month. And it's Mr. Mr. Woodstock and Mr. Gray. I think the government, 
need to know about that place because out on Spanish Town Road there, Mr. 138 Spanish Town Road, that's a place where you shall at least get some people around the community. People that look, look them all iron, come inside here and come sell the company and they make them look money. No, you have nobody in that community right there. Is the big building over there closed down? If I, I get to understand that, that they want to turn it out into a warehouse for, for some cement company. Yes. Who will um, maybe employ me about four person, Mr. Perkins, or six, uh -huh. which is a place for the youth because I leave school and I go there to learn. Plenty man in, into the industry right now, Mr. Perkins, to, to the backside, to the cement company, to the GFP. They say, here, it, they did go and learn. It's a university. It's not just a hard and replace. Just imagine the things, Mr. Perkins, that you make it for you. Just imagine it and then make it for you, Mr. Perkins. It's a brilliant place. It was set up by the Englishman then? Yes. So it's no full, full place? <laughs> I have plenty of youth out there now who would like to go and learn a trade. And I say you to have people from we are up by the country come there yes. every year. All right, so we have to leave you now, but we're, we're going to follow this up. It's All right? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. We're back online. Hello? Sir so Parkins. Yes, yeah, so good afternoon to you. Hi, good day to you. Uh huh. Um, I'm not going to be long. One or two little things here. Yeah. I heard a gentleman, a young man, or a old man, whatever, speaking to you yesterday about bleaching. Yeah. Remember? Yes. And he was adamant. Uh huh. He was even mad witness with the Prime Minister that <laughs> she, she's trying to take this away from them. Uh -huh. But I, I didn't hear you tell him that it's wrong. It's wrong? This bleaching thing. What is wrong? Why are they bleaching? Is it that okay. they have no... Because they want no, to bleach? They have no self-confidence. Well, that may be part of it. Uh, and what's so wrong with being black? I don't know. I don't know of anything being wrong with being black, but what I know is that um, that people have imbibed the notion that being black is being inferior, and I think that this is what yes. that this is what is, is being manifested here. I'm gonna postulate three things, three reasons why I think they don't want to be black. Number one, I think it started in slavery, Mr. Perkins. When the bookkeepers, the white bookkeepers and white managers copulate with the black slaves and they produce mulattoes. Then these light skinned mulattoes were promoted to be become ho house slaves. Uh -huh. And the division started there. They, 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 they were taught that they were better than the black yes, ones but, in the field. But hold on. And it has continued. To this day. But why? Why has it continued to this day? Because, let me tell you why. Uh -huh. I'll go on to number two. The stereotyping of almost everything as that is not good as being black. Black spot. But hold on a little bit. Black Friday. Hold on a little bit. Black Monday. We are supposed to be an independent. But it continues. We are supposed hold to on be. A that bit. is the word hold supposed. Hold on a minute. We are supposed to be an independent and democratic country. You're not hearing me out, you know. Let me just finish this now. Yes, but I, we all know what, what happened in slavery, sir. But the slave I'm talking about slave. what's going on today. Yes, but, but what I'm saying is, why is it still going on today? Why is it still going on yes, today? Yes, why is it that in modern 21st century... Because people, Jamaica. people like you help to perpetuate it. I do? Yes. Explain that to me. I hear you talking about high brown and high color most of, well, quite a few times. And I am saying, Mr. You Perkins, hold on, hold on a minute. in this day and age, hold talking about high color. You heard me talk about... I have about heard you, sir, in, in, your, in your broadcast. <laughs> Talk about high color Jamaicans, high brown. Look here, sir. And I'm saying this is so colonial. No wonder Hold nobody on wants to be to be black. Hold on a minute. Don't be idiotic. No, it's not oh. idiotic. 
if you heard me saying anything about high brown or high color, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. It would it would have been derisively. But Mr. Perkins, if you mention something that people being high brown or high I color, I said, sir, it's implying that the persons who are not brown are, are low color. That is the implication. No, no. I am saying, sir, that one, it is possible to make a statement like that uh-huh. in derision. Yes. Yes. And therefore, I agree. and, and hold on, people. but, but, but hold on. I'm listening. And if you make a statement like that in derision, it is a different statement from the statement made, um, ordinarily as a matter of uh, agreeing that that is, a, is, is the case. But people at your level will, will agree, will, and will accept it and take it so, but the people below you're not understanding what you're saying. Uh-huh. They don't understand so why you, you, why you don't call? Right. Why you don't come and say that I, you hear me calling black people in this country niggers? You never hear me use the word nigger on this program. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And you you believe that when I use it, what I'm doing is is dismissing the black people in this country as niggers. You don't and for that I'm matter, Mr. Perkins. for that matter, not only black people, but people of of um. Of African descent, people who have who have um, well, it is wrong. You African do it. genes in in their systems. It is wrong, Mr. Perkins. What you is wrong? Do it. Calling people niggers. Uh, who call them niggers? Well, you just tell me that you say it. Isn't that uh, what you just no, said? No, I didn't tell. But you see, there, <laughs> there again, you you have a difficulty understanding the English language. Is there a language that you understand better than English? No, English is my language. It's your language. Mm-hmm. Well, boy, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> well, <laughs> when could I go on with my last point? Yes, sir. And I am saying... So you, you agree with me mm-hmm. that to say something in derision is not to express... But not so everybody is understanding you, that you in that light, Mr. Perkins. That's what I'm saying. What? Some people take it literally. Uh, well, people like you. Well... If you want to say that. Yes. But I'm saying... I'm well, say- but I don't hear people calling from the inner city areas to tell me that they hear me co- to speaking of them as niggas. No, they don't. No. But I think they take a... Th- they, call, they call for other reasons, though. Yeah. Yes, okay. So and they understand what is being said. Well, maybe it's I don't. It's only you that don't understand Maybe I don't. Okay. I see. All right. Could I go on to my <laughs> last point? Yes. And I'm saying black Jamaicans when they look around in the ghettos, they see only black people. The light-skinned people appear to be doing well, and they live elsewhere. Uh-huh. Well, they, I am not sure that that is absolutely true. I've seen lighter-skinned people in... The exception, Mr. Perkins, in, the exception. In poor areas. But, 99% but then, sir, of the, black, the people yes. living in the ghetto, they are, okay. they, they are black people. Now, why is it, why is it that that is so in Jamaica in 2007. That is not the point. The uh, point so is that that does exist. But why does it and exist? And the people look around and see that. Uh-huh. They're not asking why. They say, boy, because I'm black, I live in the ghetto. I don't want to be black. But I want to become light-skinned. Yes. But that is how they see it. Black What's people? so hard about that, Mr. Hold Parker? on just a moment. Are there black people in this country who don't live in the ghetto? Yes, uh-huh. but the point I'm making is that 99% See, of the people a bit, who uh, live in the ghetto are black. There are no, there are no black ministers of government. You're talking about exceptions again. I'm asking again. you, are there, so black, I'm are there black ministers of government? I think you're getting soft up in the head, you know. You're getting soft in the head. Maybe so, but, but I, still, I still would like you to answer this question. Are there or are there not? You answer that question. No, no, but I asked it of you. But it's a stupid question. Why do you think it's Very stupid? Very stupid question if you ask if there are black ministers of government. Don't are, you know? Uh, are there black ministers of government? Don't you know? Eh? Don't you know? I think do I do. Do you live in this country? I think I do, but I would like so to confirm it for me. why are you asking? Why are you guilty of emphasizing the obvious? All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Okay, goodbye. Wasting my time. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, sir Perkins. Uh-huh. You know that I've listened to that caller over and over again, and it's the first time I really hear him talk rubbish, you know. 
Oh, yes? <laughs> yes, a pack of rubbish, because guess what? I I once made a comment to you about um, a fool arguing with a fool. He carries you down to his level and tries to beat you with experience. Yes. And I know that he's much smarter than that, and he doesn't take you literally. And he knows exactly, because I've listened to you use the point just to reinforce what has been what him call a stereotype. Yes. One of the questions I want to ask, and I'm not going to dwell in his foolishness. One of the questions I want to ask: When you were young, as a as a boy, did you was that word stereotype in the in the, in the in use? In use. In use. Was it around? Was that word? Did that word exist? Stereotype. Uh, yes, it did exist. Um, okay. What about this word paradigm? That's also one of them long-standing words. Yes, of course. Well, it's I've been hearing them used so often most recently that you know. Ah, I've because what has happened, sir? What has happened is that um, that uh, you know, radio talk shows, radio programming, yes, right, has expanded quite considerably, okay. and um, you know, conversations are occurring. Yes. You know, when in the back in the nineteen thirties, um, when they had those wonderful banyan trees in down in what used to be. Um, Victoria Park. Yes. Um, the people used to gather under those trees, right? Yes. Um, in little groups. And um, among them, each group would be one man who could read, right? At yes. least. And um, he would have a gleaner or hmm. whatever other newspaper. And he would read for the for the other members of the group, right? Okay, yes, and I heard about that. And you know, so spread information and, I'd, and the discussion would, uh, would follow on ideas and so on. Well, the modern radio talk show is an expansion of that idea, right? Yes. And it is reach, reaching a wider audience and um, it is helping to... Okay, because so we should look at it as a positive thing. I think so, yes. Okay, uh -huh. No. Uh, my last point is I heard on a overseas channel overseas radio um, television station about um, companies like Starbucks uh, McDonald's Burger King doing something to take out the trans fats out of their food is any of these companies in Jamaica take, have any so any undertaking such undertaking I don't know of it well I'm saying to myself if these people over there who are the originator of this fast food craze that we have taken on to so well uh -huh. are making such a um, uh, move to somewhat straighten up the place. Yes. Shouldn't we follow suit? Well, if there's a need to remove um, trans fats out of, out of the food in order to make them healthier. It should um, be done. Eh? It should be done. Yes. Apparently, the people who represent us, whether it be in the health department, don't seem that they should somehow start some well, kind maybe of... Well, part, maybe part of the problem is that the, the market is not sufficiently aware of these things, and um, and therefore the demand does not exist. Okay. Right? People, you know, will, sell, people will sell what they can sell. Oh. Right? Yes. And if, if, if people find what they're selling full of fat acceptable, then they will continue to market it. Hold on just a moment for me. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online. Yes, Mr. Perkins. Yes. And I hope um, I didn't seem too judgmental. And the last call, I didn't... I'm not saying he's a fool, but his arguments were idiotic. <laughs> yes, but oh. um, one of the things I, I, I couldn't understand, why he left his point, which he was carrying and went to being personal about your head being soft and your head is yeah. by no means getting soft well, I don't know you know <laughs> unless he is no I don't know I sometimes because I've always listened to him and he never normally speak foolishness uh -huh. so it really shocked me today yes, that he right. got down to that level uh -huh. you know I'm wondering if he had a glass of gin in front of him well I don't know <laughs> well Sir so Perkins know. you have a pleasant weekend thank and you very much and the very same to you have a thank you okay hello hello Hello? Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh -huh. I have a problem here. Yeah, um, I'm going to look over to, to Ascot Conference High School. Uh -huh. And where? yesterday, while I was in the country computer lab, the teacher's cell phone went missing. The 
call police and them search both girl and boy and they don't find the phone. And take away the student phone. All the student them phone, take them away. Why? Say so the student they must pay for the teacher phone. I go to the who school took this away the, Who yeah. took their phones away? One of the teachers. The dean of discipline, them call him. Uh -huh. and I go to the school this man, talk to him. He said they must pay for the phone. I said I want to talk to the principal. Up to about 8.20, the principal don't come. When I come back to my workplace, and I'm a friend, and I'm a co-worker, call. Talk to him, talking to him. The man said, better you come to the school. And just hang up the phone. And I, if them search the student and I don't find the phone, then I'm supposed to take the student them phone. Well, it may be, sir, that one of those students stole that phone. But to charge everybody for the phone, I I don't know where they get this one from. And those students, those father students, uh -huh. weren't the only students who come in the classroom. Uh -huh. While the father student was in the classroom, other students from classroom and teachers come in the classroom. Other teachers come in the teacher too. decks. In the possible, it's possible that the teacher stole the phone? Well, I can't tell you that teacher and teachers, teachers are not thief. Oh? And the other students that come in there, they are not thief. Uh -huh. So, do as far as the student must be a the phone. No, I don't think that they can do that. Right? That cannot be lawful. So, what can I do about that? Well, I think that you can you can talk to the principal or write to the principal telling him that you have no intention of having your child pay for that phone and did she have a phone? Yeah. Well, demand to have that phone back, right? And um, tell him that, that if he doesn't comply immediately you will be talking to your lawyer about it. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. What a hell of a thing that a school that you know this people talk about the poor quality of the educational system, but I mean imagine teachers behaving like that. How how can they um, find everybody guilty with? <laughs> Everybody guilty and everybody must pay. Everybody that they designate must pay for the um for the for this teacher's cell phone. Awful, of course, that the that the teacher's phone has been stolen. But um you can't just find everybody guilty. On with, with no evidence. Hello? Hello. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Good Perkins. Afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. Yes. I am calling on behalf of a friend. Uh huh. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing. Okay, she wants to get in contact with a, some members of a particular person. I'm going to let you speak to her. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Hello, yes. I want to talk with Anna and Kelly children. A what? Anna. Anna, can I tell you your name? Award, award, Kelly and Ron Kelly. Dave, Kelly, Altia, Kelly. And yes. But her name is St. Kelly. You used to work at university. Yes, uh, I'll tell you something. We don't deal with those problems on this program, on. Right? Um... want uh, to get a help. You want to get what? Since I've, I just I just know him and I'm helping him, I don't have what it takes to help him. He don't live anywhere. I want to get back with the children them. I want Kelly and Ron Kelly, Dave Kelly, Althea Kelly, and Marie Kelly. Uh -huh. And they live in Portmore. Oh, they, 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 they so live in... Name, the mother named Millicent Kelly. Uh -huh. That is our Kelly and Ron Kelly and Dave Kelly and Althea Kelly. Uh-huh. And, the, uh, and, well, you, the uh -huh. and you want to get in touch with them for what? Why do you want to get in touch my with number, them? My number is 547. 547-2151. Five, five, you can call me back. Okay. 547-2151. Five, five, one, one. 
I want okay. to get back with the children then. Uh huh. Five four seven two one five one. Okay. Bye. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes. Mr. Perkins. Yes. Good afternoon. Good sir. afternoon to you. I'd like to congratulate you on the work that you've been doing. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, sir. And one other thing, I um I like to p- people who have concerns, like with roads and so. I would hello. Yes, I'm listening. I would advise them to wait until maybe around March 11 or thereabouts. Uh huh. And then, yeah, maybe um, they'll get some attention at that time when the foreign press is here. Uh, oh, I see what you mean. Okay. No, they'll get some promises. They'll get promises. <laughs> no, well, well, maybe they're persistent enough. Look here, I, they, I don't think that the government has the means of um, fixing all the roads that need to be fixed in Jamaica. Okay. What has been happening is that the road system has been steadily and sometimes rapidly deteriorating over the years. Okay. And the government has not had the money to spend on it. Or or when when I say that, it has been spending what money it has on other things. Okay. Right? And um, the road system has been deteriorating. Now, I don't think that that the government is in any position in March Mm -hmm. Uh, to do any more than promise. They'll find it at that time. They, they won't find the money. They, they, they will have to because they don't want to be embarrassed. Well, they will come up with some nice words, man, and, you know, do a good Samphai job. Okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. You know? Yes, Mr. Perkins. All right? Okay. Thank you very much. And take okay, hello? Good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. Good afternoon, sir. Mr. Perkins, how are huh? you? Yes, I'd like to touch on three points. Yes. By me. Now, first of all, what that caller is saying about Caribbean castings yes. is rather distressing. It is. As that company is quite important to maintaining the industrial capability uh-huh. of our country. Yes. But uh, I think its demise began with the misguided Marxism of the 1970s. With the what? With the misguided Marxism oh. of the 1970s. Yes. And has not recovered from it. And yes. Uh, I guess you know who w- was an, a critical part of th- that ideology. Well, a number of them, but <laughs> who, who, but who have you got in mind? Uh, pardon? Who is it that you have in mind? Oh, a person who's not knowing, uh, adopted the fashion of... Uh, uh, Mission from God and all that thing, <laughs> <laughs> having repented of the <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know how prominent she was in the formulation of the ideology. Uh, you know, well, certainly didn't carry it all. Well, she went along with it. Let's say I was very close in, to it in the 1970s. Yes, uh-huh. uh, no, but I, I think though that uh, would you keep your voice up for me? Pardon? Would you keep your voice up? I, I think though that. Uh, the state of the Caribbean casting thing there is very sad and uh, it is yes some effort I think should really be made to maintain that kind of capability Uh in our society because in this industrial age it is very important Uh our next point Uh, this question of people as assets or resources Uh have a an ideological difficulty with that. Why? You see, uh, an asset or resource is something to be exploited. And if a certain set of people are an asset or resource, who then is to, to do the exploiting? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, it doesn't necessarily follow that that is, well, exploited in the sense of made use of. Right? That's what to, you do to, with assets. To, yes, but to exploit doesn't necessarily carry the meaning of of um, the, the the meaning of um, what is it now? What is the word I'm looking for? Um, <laughs> to 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 use unconscious well to use without any any thought. For the thing that is being used, no, right? Um, C- could I people? suggest an alternative? What is way the alternative? Of expressing it? 
that uh, the assets are what the peop what assets are for people, and the principal asset mm -hmm. of the country in relation to the people is the knowledge, skill, and productive capability of the people. Yes. When we look at this as being the asset, uh -huh. it then implies that any person may choose that he or she will exploit his or her own knowledge, skill, and productive capability, uh -huh. or may con seek, uh, choose to contribute it collectively to some group activity. Uh -huh. But when you recognize that the asset is the knowledge, skill, and productive ability hold, hold, hold on just a moment for me. Hold on just a moment for me. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here with you. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I tell you what. It, it does not seem to me that we have a substantial difference worth arguing about. Right? You are seeing the word asset as meaning a thing. Right? Um, rather than a person. Um, and the thing is to be exploited in the sense of being used without any um, requirement of being rewarded. Right? That is my understanding yes, of the meaning in of the, the word. In, in the way that you use a cutlass. Right? Yeah. Um, or money or anything. I don't... I... I I was not using the word in that sense, right? I... No, the way you use it is quite commonly used in Jamaica. For yes, instance, well, uh, we I mean... We talk about human resources, uh -huh. <laughs> but that's a term that has always bothered me. Uh -huh. Because uh, my understanding is that... Well, it's not, that's human, not used no. only in Jamaica, it's all over the world. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but, but then ex exploitation and slavery are all, all over the world also. Well, I don't know that that is so. But, um, it, well, necessarily well, so. Connection. But um, it, it seems to me, sir, that um, if you understand the word exploit as meaning, um, you know, the well, yeah, using it in the way that one uses a tool, Right? Uh, and it, uh, uh, a material, impersonal thing. Um, well, fine. That you know, it would follow that you would be exploiting people in a bad sense. But um, if by exploit you mean, um, you know, realizing the value of, then that would be something quite different. What What I would suggest is that if we look at it the way I suggest you. Mm -hmm realize that merely to increase the numbers of untutored people will not make us better off. If we're going to, to, to be better off, we have to make sure that we properly teach our people. We properly? Teach our people to give them knowledge and skill. Uh -huh. Then we'll increase our assets. But we don't have any, um, we don't have any dispute there. <laughs> So it's what I'm speaking of. What I'm pointing out here is, in a way, what you may call a technicality uh -huh. in the way you use the language. Yes, but, but what I think is that the way we use words has a way of setting our mental orientation, uh -huh. which to me is critical. Yes, uh, which also leads into the next point I wish to touch on. Uh -huh. but, but I, I don't think that the word exploit necessarily means what you are you are imputing to it. No, I think if you check the dictionary, you'll find it does. You know. um, have you got one th there? No, I not in front of me. Huh? Not in front of me, but well, something I've looked into in the past. You've looked into it? Yeah. And what does it tell you that the word exploit means? It means to, to utilize. Huh? To, to utilize for benefit. Yes, well... Or another way of putting it would be to realize the value of. Realize in the sense of, um, of um, you know. Uh, no, uh, to, to realize is somewhat intransitive. I intransitive? Uh, pardon? Intransitive? Yeah. Uh, you, you can <laughs> realize passively. That is 
what, what, uh, no, but to, no, 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 no. It's something you do actually. To realize, it would be to make real, to, to, to bring to reality, right? The, but, but that can happen without <laughs> you taking any yes, but action. It, it, but it, look here, it illustrates exploit the problem action. that you are having with the word exploit. Uh, pardon? I said words can have. Words, when you look at the meaning of a word in the dictionary, you usually see one, and they give a meaning, two, mm -hmm. and they give another meaning, and so on. Oh, yeah. A lot of words are like that, and I think that these words, the word realize, Realize might mean that I suddenly come to the to, to recognize, right? That so and so is the case. No, what, what I'm saying is that realize is both transitive and intransitive, but exploit is always transitive and active. <laughs> so to realize can operate both ways. Exploit is a word of action. Um, to, well, I don't know what that has anything, has to do with it. What I'm saying is that there are different shades of meaning. Uh, right? Uh, and, and the word exploit does not mean that you take advantage of, but there again, um, no, that yeah, word has there. the same problem. I yeah, disagree with you there. What? Yeah. Well, Exploit disagree for always that. Always means that you take advantage no. of. No, that you that you what? That you you uh, t you use to advance your own advantage. No, not the necessarily. No, exploit. no, 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 no. Not necessarily your own personal selfish advantage. That is one of the meanings of exploit. That you you use. Um, for your own personal and selfish uh, advancement. But it does not necessarily mean that. Right? Well, I'll check it again, but I'm inclined to disagree with you that. on that point. <laughs> anyway, to move on to the next one. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, your conversation with that caller was talking about the Queen should build this and that and university and that was to me rather distressing but I think you're, you're the, a bit harsh queen, with them. The Queen what? The, the Queen of England should build university in every parish. <laughs> so one of the things he said. And, yes, uh, yes. Other such things. But I think your uh, treatment of him was a little bit harsh and that's very oh, why. It took many millions of years for humanity to reach to the point of making written records of experience. Uh -huh. uh, many millions of years? <laughs> well, uh, well, well, I uh, believe uh, very much in the value of religion. I'm not inclined to take the uh, account of uh, creation literally as it is expressed in the Bible. Uh -huh. I think the Bible has a right sequence, yes. but uh, I don't think a day of creation was exactly 24 hours. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> By the uh, anthropological records, uh, or should I say, uh, paleontolo paleontological records, it took a few million years. Uh, so, is what? It took a, a, a couple of million years for humans to develop to their present level from the beginning yes, of that, the first human. That would that would depend on um, your view as to when humanity began. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, carry on. Yeah. Make so uh, the art of writing, however, has been is only something of the order of about uh, ten thousand. Uh, some say maybe uh, uh, between 40 and 10,000 years old. Oh. And the cultures which have really advanced and left the others behind are those who learned to make use of the written record, which is to say that they had the benefit of the experience of the ancients. And this is what they built on 
to achieve their present status of development. But they had the, they, it, it didn't take writing um, for them to have the benefit of the experience of the and achievements of, yes, of their if, forebears. If you check out the societies which really had well-developed civilizations, including technology, Every one of them had some form of writing. Yes, the, 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 true. But they, they, and uh, what I'm saying is that um, they, they had more than writing. True. They had other inventions and yeah, other creations of their forebears. We, we cannot separate since that r the ability to make the written records was so consistent. Uh, anyway, what's the point you're making? The point I'm making is that uh, wisdom is something that has to be learned. No one person uh, or even f few generations of people can really generate enough out of their own minds to accomplish very much. And we have to recognize the need to learn this. Unfortunately, most Jamaicans have not yet come to that consciousness, which is why too many of us talk the kind of nonsense we do. So we have to be sympathetic and recognize that too often in the past, our leaders have sought more of their own advantage than to really point the way of our society towards what is necessary to really acquire wisdom. So I think we need to be uh -huh. as sympathetic <laughs> with yes. people who make things, who talk like that call it did. Uh -huh. And they'll tend to recognize that they have to, you know, sit down and really look into some of the wisdom that exists in the wider world and try to learn a thing or two. Uh -huh. And uh, from that, to find out uh, where we're going wrong and uh, what is the right path that we should take? Fair yeah, well, I substantially agree with you. I mean, we 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 don't, for example, we don't look at other places. I mean, you know, we complain about the white people and them how they exploited us. We don't look and see what it was that put them into the position to be able to do this. Quite. Well, hold on just a moment for me. Okay, thank you very much. We're back online. Hello? Hello? Y yes. So I just like to sum up by saying that uh, we will do much better to seek wisdom and understanding rather than to seek handouts. Uh -huh. so. Quite true. So thank all right. You. Wish you all thank you very much. Hello? Hello, Mr. P. Hi. Hi, how are you? Oh, uh, yeah. I am looking. I'm looking around the parish because the parish hasn't got any big breed goat, but they've got a lot of corn, meagre, flour, bulgur. Oh. And if you bring your own bottle, you get a little bit of oil. Oh, lovely. That over is in the southeast side of St. Mary. Uh -huh. That is what is going on now. Cornmeal? Cornmeal, bulgur, uh -huh. rice. And as I say, if you bring your own bottle, you'll get a little oil. Oh, is that so? That is what is being sprinkled about in South East St. Mary. Is that so? Yes. I but see. Let me move on to this. I would love to be a defense counsel for Mr. Samuda. Uh -huh. Now, that issue with Mr. Samuda, and they're censoring him. That is Gestapo like. It's a totalitarian attitude. Uh -huh. Because Mr. Hilton did not say he did not write this report. Yes. He was asked to write this report by your schoolmate. He produced the report. Where it got up to, I don't know if they pushed it under your door, or they pushed it under Mr. Samuda's door. Certainly they didn't push it under my door. But they are trying Mr. Samuda and they censor him and the censor motion was passed. Uh -huh. It was passed. Yes. And whoever brought that motion should be ashamed they brought the parliament to a total disgrace. Uh -huh. And I tell you why. A month after the censure, Mr. Sam Yuda, this report turned up in the UDC minutes of the meeting. Yes. How did it get there? Who brought it there? Yeah. How it got into the minutes of the meeting? Now, what they are getting him next week to come to the privilege committee to say, 
To say that he did not mislead the parliament? No, no. To say what? What they want him to say. Yes. Is whether he still believes that what he said, what he told parliament was correct. But it is correct. It is correct no, but, because but, it turned up in the minutes sir. of the UDC but, meeting. But hold on. It is immaterial whether it was correct. Oh, the last right? is... Because what they, 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 they can't be censuring him. Yes. For what he now believes. Yes. Right? I believe. They would have, they would have had to... you believe. They would have had to have been censoring him. Yes. For deliberately misleading parliament. Right? Yes. But as Mr. Golding has pointed out. Yes. Um, well, to put it in my own words. Yes. Um, yes, sir. It is, it is possible. Yes. That he himself would have been misled because it, 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 assuming that what we are, we are hearing from the other side is true. Yes. Because if Mr. Patterson commissioned yes. Mr. Hilton yes. to do a report. And he did it. Right? He did the and report. And Mr. Hilton did the report. Yes. Right? Yes, sir. Then it would be, it would require explanation that Mr. Hilton, having done the report that the Prime Minister instructed commissioned him to do. Yes. Did not hand that report over to the Prime Minister. What they want Mr. Samuda to tell them? How the report no, got in his hands? They want hand? Mr. Samuda to tell them. Yes. That he, in other words. Yes. It, it seems that they have found, it, 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 that they are admitting to themselves at least, that they are in a, ver, in a ridiculous position. A ridiculous is right? crazy. And, and what they want the is for Mr. Samuda to come. And, um, and get them out of that stew. Look. By, by telling them that he no longer believes that, that, um, or something of the sort. I don't know. Look, look, and let me not fly over this point. Mr. Golden went there, uh -huh. he researched the law, and I don't think any of them see anything near May's parliamentary practices. Uh -huh. They don't listen to the cover of the book inside the library in Parliament, uh -huh. which I have gone in there many times. You understand? Yes. They have seen the book. They have never opened it. I see. And here is... Very this. likely. Pardon? Very likely. Here is this gentleman now. After a well-researched article, he gone all over the Commonwealth, India, and all over, and he brought facts there. And the Dilly Darlene and the Shilly Charlene, a foot loose and fancy free, and they're inviting Mr. Samuda to come there now. The report has been written by Mr. Hilton, which he don't deny. Yes. Then how he get into the UDC minutes of the meeting? You know what? What they are trying Mr. Samuda for? To enlighten us, poor people, darkness, to tell us how our taxes, 43 million, if uh -huh. darkness come into it, to tell black people like we what happened. That's <laughs> all they're doing. Blackness, yeah. The Mr. Samuda never conspired with them to hide the facts from us. Uh -huh. That is all is happening. Uh -huh. And I am glad Mr. Samuda brought it to light and I will always dwell upon it because me, a little common black man, we go to school bare feet or barefoot. And you're, I take it that you're hoping that yes, he sir. will not back down. Pardon? I say, I take it that you're hoping. Yes. That he will not back down. He will not back down. And I am telling you, this blackness and color and class that they are interjecting. Oh, that came into it too? Oh, they, um. Yes. You mean yes? Yes. Uh -huh. It make you want to spit. It make <laughs> you want to spit or vomit. Because this blackness, I have gone all over Europe. And I seen white people. Black people, Chinese people, all kind of people. And I am proud for what I am. I am a little black man, but I am proud about it. Yes. And I don't, I feel I'm good as any other man and better than a lot. Well, I, I'm not going to get into any argument with anybody about it, you know, sir. But if, um, if I go into a shop and they don't want to sell me because they don't like my color, that's fine. Just tell me. I'll Very take my fine money by somewhere me. Else. I'm not getting into any Very argument. Very fine by me. And eh? when they're stringing this argument about blackness and color this and color that, you want him basically making a statement to you this morning that the Queen should put a university oh. in every... 
in, in every part of the island, in every parish. Yes, yes, yes. What, yes. what is what they are thinking? <laughs> but yes. I, I tell you something. When, when some of us do that kind of nonsense, that nonsense, right? Rubbish. Um, they are encouraging people elsewhere to think that that is what black people are capable of, you know? Certainly. Um, <laughs> Certainly. And then, and then when, when people discriminate against us, you know, they, they blame the people and not themselves. I have a charm life when it comes to my color. I laugh, I enjoy myself, uh -huh. and I make rings around. But the parliament of this land, your schoolmate has shown the parliament that the law is not a shackle. Uh -huh. That's what your schoolmate that you wasn't in school with. Yes. You know, I watched him. And when this thing come up about, when it came up, this matter, a White House, he says the taxpayers of this country will not be asked to bear any of the costs. Yes. That's what he said. Uh -huh. Rang Jungle was sitting beside him. And Rang Jungle looked up at him like he never heard anything so preposterous. <laughs> But Rang Jong has gone on to some other madness, you know, sir. Uh -huh. You know what he said yesterday evening? That the people over Port Moses asked for a raise in the, in the um, toll. But leave that. Don't take no notice of that for the time being, because uh -huh. that won't come now. Uh -huh. And I think that is a mad statement. It means that he's going to tax out the gut hole, <laughs> but they must hold strain. What that will come after, you know? Uh -huh. The taxes on the port more people, and we did underestimate this. And he has been carrying on, and I never hear a statement so ludicrous as that. Don't worry about it. And the people have applied, and he's saying that they have entitled to every six months they apply for a raise on the toll. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm afraid I have to leave you, sir. Good, good. Time for now business nice online. Weekend. We'll be back in a few minutes. Yeah, well, I mean, matter who come more radical, you know? I follow you. Yeah, yeah, you are the real big man, you know? And <laughs> me listen to you because, in my opinion, you balance your program, you know? Uh -huh. At least I try to. But anyway, let me ask you a question. How many, how many different um, PMs have we had in this country since independence? Prime Ministers? Uh huh. Well, there was, um, since independence, Bustamante. Right. Donald Sangster. Two. Hugh Shearer. Three. Um, Michael Manley. Four. Eddie Siaga. Five. Uh, P.J. Patterson. Six. Portia Simpson Miller. Seven. Uh -huh. So, the Norman Manley was a premier then. He was a premier. He was a premier, yes. He was a premier. They, well, they used to call them that. Not that it... Um, yes, and... All right, yeah. okay. So, we have had seven prime ministers in this country. Of independent Jamaica. Right. The, the prime minister started with independence. Right. Uh -huh. So, how many out of the seven? Uh, put aside Portia has been responsible for the Ministry of Education. How many out of the Was directly seven? responsible for the Ministry who held up that portfolio. Any of the six held that portfolio? Well, hold on. Not, not Buster, not Sangster, not Shearer, not Michael Manley, not um, Eddie Siaga, not uh, P.J. Patterson, Right. So you realize, Moti, that... None of them. Yeah. And you realize that... Listen to what His Majesty, Haile Selassie, had to say on education. Uh -huh. Education develops the intellect, and intellect distinguishes man from other creatures. Uh -huh. It is education that enables man to harness nature and utilize the resources for the well-being and improvement of his life. Uh -huh. The key for the betterment and completeness of modern living is education. Uh -huh. So why is it that... None of them decide to be directly responsible for that particular portfolio. Well, I, I, I think that... Since that will use to shape the future of this no, country. No, I, I think that in theory, Prime Ministers, I, I thought you meant, had handled that portfolio before becoming Prime Minister. But in fact, pr Prime Ministers are responsible for all portfolios. Yeah, um, but, right? but they have specific portfolio that they're... Well, uh, the, the Prime Minister is in charge of the government and the, um, the Minister of Education is appointed by the Prime Minister and works in effect for the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister is the 
boss of the show. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Who would you say, in your judgment, right now today, the most respected living politician, and I'm speaking global, right now? The most respected living politician. Right now, in globally? your mind. What do you say, globally? Yeah, yeah, global. Or here in Jamaica? <laughs> no, because that's a global. Um, I don't know. I'd have to, you'd have to give me some time to think that one out. <laughs> well, it's easy for me. Nelson Mandela. Uh-huh. I would say Nelson Mandela. All right. I went to, I went, when I went to South Africa, I took time out to, to go to his house. Uh-huh. And that man lived a very simple, middle-class life. Yes. Would you agree with me, Moti, that crime and violence stems mainly from individuals wanting to achieve the material things of this earth? Um, That's the main reason why people commit crime. Uh huh. Maybe. Right. So our politicians here, they, I think, to say to to oh, I say the big man role in South Africa is home in Johannesburg. Nothing too flashy, very simple. So what it does, it reflect to the to the people who live in the, in South Africa that life is not just all about the material there's uh-huh. other essence and meaning to life would you agree with that? but South Africa has a very high crime rate you know sir huh? South Africa has a very high crime rate yeah but don't forget that they've just recently came out of apartheid uh-huh. so th- there's always going to be that um, conflict in, oh, in South Africa so you're contradicting but, but, yourself no but what I'm saying is um, government ministers here Moti uh-huh. but let's go back to Jamaica then government ministers here when they use them to hold the rule in very expensive vehicles and all these things, you know what's the, pro- just... you know the problem here, sir? Uh-huh. Um, the, in Jamaica, politics is a stepping stone to the great house. Right. <laughs> right? When you become a minister, one of the things that you're looking for is a lifestyle. Um, modeled on that of the great house you see <laughs> and all the um, all the niggers in the in the barracks are voting for you in order that you may drive um, what do you think name Escalade and whatever and, and live grandly you see and have credit card and <laughs> yeah okay um, uh, hold on just a moment for me Okay, thank you very much. We're back with you. Listen about the great house. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, I was saying that um, that politics is a stepping stone. Right. To the great house. Right. You know, um, wherever you come from, if you can make it up the political ladder, then you live a grand life. Most most of these politicians were they born multimillionaires? As, uh, <laughs> no, sir, no. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? <laughs> no. uh, do, uh, let me ask another question. Do you believe in total modernization, Moti? Total modernization, meaning yeah, what? in regards to um, a country, like everything modernized. Uh, well, it depends on what you mean by modernized. Yeah, well, modernization. And, and, um, in the in in the, in the essence of um, total upliftment and development of a country, like everywhere paved off with concrete and houses all over well, the place. Because uh, it no, no, it, I don't know that modernized necessarily means that. Huh? I say I don't know that modernized necessarily. So, what's your means definition that? of modernized? Well, um, uh, in in keeping with the with the advancement of mankind i mean if you you're not dwelling in the 15th century right um you're living under the conditions of the 21st yeah because and you have uh, and you you have the opportunities and the efficiencies and the yeah, whatever of the 21st century i i say the more we 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 enter into modernization meaning all these cars coming into the country oh well uh right yes. And um and you know now we have the toll road. I say hard ship hard ship coming on the people in Amoti, uh-huh. because you know it then now requires that we have to pay for all these utilities. Uh, well, I, and, uh, and what is more, sir? What is more? The motor car is only part of a technology, right? You a motor car cannot function on the donkey track. 
No. Right? You have to have, for modern cars, you have to have modern roads. Right? Right. And you can't fill up the country with cars to the point where the car can't move and think that you're doing well. And in the conditions of Jamaica, it seems to me that we would have been a lot better off with a first-class public transportation system, right? That would have moved you in... I mean, if you... if From one part of the corporate area to another on the morning, it can take you an hour and a half. Yeah, but you, you know, this, I'm looking at it even beyond that, Monty. Uh-huh. Because every time you start a car engine, do you know what you breathe from the exhaust? Well... Carbon it, monoxide. Yes. Poison. Well, no, no. Carbon mon- monoxide is not a stable gas, sir. Yeah. When carbon monoxide is emitted into the air, it consumes, it, 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 it forms, it quickly becomes carbon dioxide. It takes up another. Yeah, oxygen but before atom. it becomes carbon dioxide, it, it first came oxygen, out as there, carbon there monoxide. Water, I suppose. Am I right? I, uh, that what? Before it becomes carbon dioxide. Uh-huh. It has to be carbon monoxide that comes out first. It is carbon monoxide that comes out. But, but isn't that as poison? As soon as it yes. encounters oxygen, it becomes carbon dioxide. Yeah, but isn't that isn't that poison? What? That what comes out of the exhaust? Carbon monoxide. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes. So that 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 has dreadful effect because if you one of the quickest way to kill uh, individual to exit himself is to just lock up in a garage and turn on the exhaust. That's true. So that's what I'm saying. So we have to, is there anyone who is responsible for the Ministry of Health looking into the country to see how a small country like this should not have so much motor car? Oh, well, I, I don't think it was a good idea to go the route of the individual motor car, you know? Yeah. Um, we, as I say, we might have gone public transportation, buses and tram cars, and I don't think we should have removed the tram cars. Um, and the train, you know, we could have moved about Jamaica far more efficiently, far more quickly um, that way than by the motor car. And of course, supplemented by taxi services. So, you see, you, you said earlier that I contradicted myself, but one of the reasons why I mentioned Nelson, you know, Mr. Perkins, uh-huh. is because when the youth, them looking on, you know, the PMs and the uh, member of parliament, uh-huh. they all drive flashy cars, and I'm sure most of them have more than one car. Uh-huh. So the, the, the nation aspired to that, thinking that is the way to go, because people always follow their leaders, you know. Uh-huh. Leader is someone who you follow, am I right? Yes. Uh-huh. So if you see your leader driving in the most expensive car, you think that that's the way to go? Yes. So, you know, th- this is why I'm saying that, you know, a, a man like Nelson Mandela, him just, you know, nothing, so the youth don't, so that money that they used to buy all those vehicles, that money could have invested and do something else, you know. Yes. C- more constructive. And, and it, 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 I wouldn't mind seeing, uh, you know what I mean, politicians driving around in, in, in the port, putting back the country on one level. Mm-hmm. Nothing would be wrong with that. Well, I tell you something, you know, sir, that flashy car is very often a symbol of insecurity. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, people who rush to to get the Escalade and the this and that and the other are people who who believe that their their persons are going somehow to be enhanced by these flashy cars that they drive. Right? Yeah. But there are, there are people with a lot of people all over the world with a lot of money. Um, yeah. If you saw them in their in their cars, you might think that they were paupers. <laughs> <laughs> Come, repeat that again, Moti. I say they were uh, people of immense wealth. Yeah. All over the world. Uh-huh. If you see them in their cars, you might be led to think that they are paupers. <laughs> I <coughs> I remember in particular two brothers. Um, very prominent names in Jamaica um, and quite wealthy and I remember when I was a youngster uh, um, 
they used to drive two little Austin motor cars. Two little black Austin motor cars. <laughs> look, well, they're not, they, they weren't big enough to, to look like hearses. Yeah. Like tiny little things. Uh-huh. Right? And they had interest in, in a firm that was selling Cadillacs and, and other things like that, you know. Uh, and the, the thing is, Moti, what but They weren't these, driving that. Uh, uh, y- you know what I'm saying? That most of these cars, right? Uh-huh. Are things that we use. Do we recycle them? The cars? I mean, in general. Oh, 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 is recycling coming on in this country? Well, I don't know. I don't but, know about that. Because, because if you're not planning to recycle r- rubbish, Moti, uh-huh. uh, what, what will eventually happen in, in the long run? Well, I don't know. Because that. every 20, 30 years, these cars that we have now, uh-huh. if you're driving a car now, and that car is five years old, the next 30 years, that becomes um, garbage, you know. Well, not necessarily. I mean, there are cars... Well, it depends, are... Monty, but most of them looking to go, years, go towards yes. the dump. 30 years. Right. So, that goes to us. But do we recycle these things? Is, do we recycle our I don't our know, rubbish? sir. I, I think there are people in the business of collecting scrap metal and selling it. And know. making pots, etc. Yes. Yeah, I have to go. Thank you very much. All, All right, the best to you. Have a good weekend. Uh, yes. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yes? I like speaking to Perkins. Yes, yeah, speaking. Um, Mr. Perkins? Yes, sir. Uh, and I you're into the clear list still. Uh, well, all right, let me... How about that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I'm not hearing you at all now. All right, Mr. Perkins? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, look, a problem, you know. What's that? I have a business place right at Slip Road. Uh-huh. But then again, government licked down my business place, um, KCSC. Uh-huh. Call him claim said during the time I uh, was a plaza more than one business claim to the queen coming here and what, what the claim that what? During the time them claim to the queen coming here but my business place it look like still and it never looked like a shack. Uh-huh. And them end up lick down the building. Uh-huh. And which and why still not to you know like if not saying the minister don't willing to let me have um a start still and the assistant but to get to him, it is very hard. It's like many letters I write, and when I see like um, the minister advise them saying we'll get those letters. Uh-huh. So um, I would like in where I could explain to him where I could get some advice. Would you speak up for me? I'm not hearing you very clearly. Huh? I, I, would, I would like um, to get some advice from you, or I could um, get my justice. Justice? Yes, sir. But your your the building was in violation of the rules. Building rules? I don't hear. They, they, they knocked down your building? Yes, sir. Because they said that it was in violation of the building rules? No, no, no. I, I, that spot there over 20 years, you know, and I get um, permission. Uh-huh. I get permission from the council to... Um, from the council? Yeah? From the council or from the council? From the council. Uh-huh. To have the building oh. here. And then again, you see, Mr. Perkins? Yes. Yeah. 